Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, my forever co-host, Mr. Tyler Emerson. Mm -hmm. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good, man. Good to be back. Hope everybody's well. Excited for this. Indeed. Also joining us first time on the show, uh, and I'm sad that we've waited this long to have him. It's Rocco, your boy. What's up, Rocco? How you doing? Hello, everybody. Hello, Vince. Hello, Tyler. Hello, chat. I'm feeling good. This is nice. This is nice. It's great to have you. Rocco, oh, pleasure being here. If you're not familiar, he was one of our participants in our uh, Muppets Evolved game mm -hmm, that happened mm -hmm. over on Meph's channel. Uh, it was a great time. Yep. Rocco played a fantastic Muppet. Uh, it was. I did. I had a. It was the a Swedish chef disciple that went around with his his pan his trusty pan pan and his gun goon. And it was a real gun that just blew up actual Muppets for a lot of damage. It was hysterical. <laughs> it was great. It was a great game so uh glad to have rocco on the channel tonight we're going to be sharing our thoughts on aos 3.0 so far uh mm. getting into some of the oh let's call it nuances of the mm. things we've learned uh tyler and i we've, we've gotten a, and rocco we've gotten a bunch of games in rocco's been doing a series over on his own channel and understanding some fine nuances uh we've been yeah. to some tournaments now so it's we, we, we we've got some thoughts you're going to listen to every one of them. That's how this works. Mm -hmm. uh, and right off the rip, if you like the idea of thoughts, why not hit that like button? It's so easy. Mm. It's just clicking it right away. And it helps other people find the show. Just click that little button. Be a cool guy or gal. Thought-provoking, man. Thought-provoking. Indeed. Ah. But first off, the news, as always. So, Tyler, what have we got? The news. Rumor engine. Do we finally have a week where it's an AOS thing? I think we may have done it. Uh, yeah, I'll bring it up. Sorry, I had the event slide up still because I wasn't thinking, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, it's all good. It is a corn thing because you can see the corn symbol right here. The rest of this mm, is yep. a corn symbol. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's an AOS thing. As we mentioned before, they've met, they've rumored the word bearers coming yeah. back. So it could very well be a 40K thing. Who knows? Yeah, getting a corn vibe, or maybe, uh, what are they called, Exodites? The Eldari Dino oh. Riding. And that could be Eldari. a cane thing, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay. maybe. Yeah. They're a little more fair. Are... I'm... Hmm. I mean, that's that's the dream. Have there ever been Exodite models? In 40 you know, I don't know, actually. Uh, if anybody in the chats knows that, I don't remember seeing. Maybe way back when, yeah, they had had some. There was a lore. There's supposed to be corsairs we never see. There's supposed to be a yeah. whole a whole mess of space elves somewhere, doing something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that, they probably want be... their regular range before they start exploring the other things. But, you know. <laughs> sure, you're not wrong. Yeah, we could be hopeful it's... though. <laughs> sure, it's probably world eaters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's that, and then mm -hmm. of course we had Warhammer Plus launched. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> happened. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite things that Rob does. Yeah, it, it gets me every mm -hmm. time. So we had a a battle report, thousand points between Stormcast and Crawl Boys. Where we actually got a little more info. Thought yes. would give a give a quick rundown. Oh Rocco, sure, did you catch hey, that? I did not watch it, so, so I didn't I, get I'm to not watch on it. The Plus, so I didn't see anything. What what I wanted, learn, Tyler? Live uh, infield reporting. What did we learn? Yeah, hundred percent doing my job. Yes, All right, sir. so a stuff action for Cruel Boys called Grinning Blades. I don't think we have heard about this one yet. Maybe we did an article on it. So forgot about it. Maybe out of the mist. Yeah, out of the mist battle traits. The mm -hmm. first round, units are not visible to enemy units more than 12 away. So they get night so, fighting in round one. Yep. Yep. I'll take it. Not too bad. Not too bad. Get that shooting and, meta out of here, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not, not doing a damn thing to Sentinels, but hey, whatever. Can't sure, have everything. <laughs> they just shoot into the clouds. Don't even care. Yeah. They just hear, yeah. they hear the sounds of orcs dying. Yep. <laughs> Slippery Scumbag, command trait, amazing name. You can mm. retreat and still charge. Sure. I think that's part of the Grinning Blades. Spiker yeah. Seeds Artifact, once per game, if an enemy unit finishes a charge move, 
six mm -hmm. inches away, throw the spiker seeds, roll the dice for each model in the unit, five plus mortal wounds. A little mortal wound bomb on a big okay. unit. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty cool. Was that a once per game, you said? Or is yeah, that? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, once per game. A little okay. artifact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then a little bit on, so uh, forgetting the fellow's name with Warmer Community, he played Hammers of Sigmar. They, you know, they used to have the six up was board. It? I think it was around Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Hammers that. of Sigmar. Yeah. Okay. Because now it's. They um, that a little bit. Well, the article was saying that you can have Jacothian Guard now as battle line there. Mm -hmm. And I know I got some Fulminators that are going to need a home because uh, if they lost their shooting attack and now it's an ability, my whole living city list I've been using for <laughs> year and a half is gone. So, yeah. <laughs> got some Dracos well, to, to move around. Right. So now uh, Nick, Nick was playing Hammers of Sigmar. Yeah. Okay. Six up okay. ward when within, or probably wholly within 12 inches. He said within, maybe it was wholly within, within 12 sure. inches of an objective. You get a six up ward for your okay. Hammers of Sigmar unit. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. And then Envoy of the Heavens command trait for Hammers of Sigmar if a unit within 12, or again, maybe wholly within 12, suffers a casualty. That unit gets a plus one save for the rest of the turn. Oh, Which, again, that's pretty strong. Okay, okay. so they yeah. have to—it have to be—they have to be getting attacked by multiple units to trigger that. Right. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that was just one unit or if any unit could, sure. you know, a unit mm -hmm. or yeah, single unit. Mm -hmm. But and okay. then the artifact, a modified wound—you know, pretty pretty basic. A modified wound rolls of uh, six do double damage on one melee weapon profile. Hammer might artifact power. So. Okay. Yeah. Snooze. Sure. It's there. <laughs> sure. It's there. It works, I guess. Better than on the on the to hit, but still. Right. It's a thing. Yeah. Uh, it's a thing. Quick question. Did they get rid of the uh the bring back a redeemer unit on a five up then? They didn't mention it. So oh, I would must guess be gone. So, okay. I'll take yeah. okay. Okay. You may I want to put, try so. try turning your camera on and off again. By the way, again, Rocco, it's doing that okay. thing again. That thing. All right, here we go. Although you did have a good mm -hmm. frozen frame, not a silly frozen frame. Ah, if it so was a nice. good one, I could have just. It's all right. It looks like it's going to keep doing it because you came back, you moved <laughs> for like a second, then it stopped. Now you're <laughs> moving again. It'll just have to be the way we live with. All right. All right. I tried. No, Sorry, chat. Good. Such is it. Such is life. Such is life. Mm. We're gonna get all sorts of fun Rocco freeze frames during this uh, during this show. Hey. Uh, so all this info was on Warhammer Plus on their one hundred on their thousand point battle report that went up. Yeah. Good. Indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that leads into we got a little status update on the <laughs> where are the battle tomes? Yes. Oh. I mean, not not getting all the details of you know changing articles and from the past and yada, yada, yada. But basically they're now saying, uh, due to the ongoing global disruption, rest assured that the battle tomes will be both available to pre-order in September. Okay. <laughs> That's a thing, I guess. It's a shame. We're really pushing it here for me getting a hold of my stuff for that tournament that I'm going to in early November. Like this is, it's getting harder and harder for me to know what I'm playing. So, but which, that's fine. Which, which one are you going uh, to in November? I'm going to to Holy Havoc, and I want to take. Okay. Uh, now it's only a thousand points of Stormcast. I have to have painted, so that's mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. I would, there'd be no chance of this, especially with the paint scheme I'm going for here. Oh. Um, but the, uh, but you know, not getting a hold of my Dragon Riders and stuff like that. When clearly that's what I'm going to paint, because then I can make like a nine model army, and it'll be great, and right. I'll be, and I'll actually finish this in time. Yeah. Uh, uh but, um. You know, yeah, like the the battle tome delay is is insane. Uh, mm. It's like whatever you can't get the books. I I'm sure they're shipping them from China. I don't know why they still only have the books as opposed to just putting out mm. digital books. That's what they should have. <laughs> right. I mean, there's a lot of obvious things. Tyler S said, "What are my thoughts on Warhammer Plus?" My thoughts are, it seemed like a train wreck today. If you have to put out a flow chart for how to sign in to your your service, <laughs> you've yeah. gone wrong. Like, I mean, mm. I, like, I don't, I don't have anything that a million other content creators aren't going to already say and think like, I mean, of course it's silly. Like there's no universe mm. where that's appropriate. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, like, 
It's just a common sense thing. Like when I get a new app from any from anyone, you know, in in the world, I don't expect mm -hmm. that to be how it works, right? I I go, I'm in the app, I create my new account. Maybe yeah. there's a multi-factor authentication, and then I'm done. You know, mm -hmm. like that's it. That's, that's yeah. how this works. Um, so like it just. Like, again, I, I don't have any, I, I'm sorry, everybody, I don't have any great passion for it. Like, I don't have any great anger because mm -hmm. they've never proven themselves competent at launching these apps. And I had nope. no expectations that they would prove themselves competent this time. Like, yet again, mm -hmm. they managed to somehow find rock bottom and, and just continue with that level of quality when it comes to their digital content. So I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Like... Yeah, the somebody made a comment that, you know, basically the battle time delay may be due to the AOS app delay, which of course the 40k app was quite delayed and uh, I had gathered it was a bit of a mess when it came out as well. I'm not sure the current state of it, but yeah, so that, that could very well be the case that they're just trying to get their AOS app in order before they can get these books up, uh, you know, with the, the connection between the two. I, I think they're going to make the battle tomes available digital only through that app. As I understand it, yeah. So Tyler said, "Why? Why do I think they've they've had a spotty track record? Simple, because they, it's not what they do. Like businesses yeah. do a thing yeah. when you try to do things outside of that, and you don't bring in the right people, and it's outside of your wheelhouse of expertise. It you often have problems. Like that's just. By the way, this isn't something like unique to them. Even like major, very successful tech companies regularly screw mm. crap up like this." Um, mm. You know, when Facebook first launched Facebook Live, people were streaming oh. like murders and suicides <laughs> and stuff like, oops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so and that's pretty egregious. Um, mm. So, again, it's not like, you know, it's not like this is some unique thing for GW. And by the way, that's that was actually in Facebook's wheelhouse mm -hmm. of the type of product they developed and they still royally screwed it. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. like, it's just it's it's a very easy thing to mess up. And when you're working out, when you're trying to do something, a whole new sort of vertical. And when you, when you're working outside of your expertise as well, it's just a, it's an environment that's right for it. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, yeah. that, that's my thoughts. Like I, I'm sure they'll mm -hmm. eventually get it to a good place. Yeah. So it's going to take some months, a lot of kinks to be, you know, ironed out. It'll happen eventually. And then we'll move on to something else to complain about. Sure. I mean, like, <laughs> You know, um, you know, they're a model company, as we hear about with the rules. They're a model company. <laughs> sure. Mm. I mean, you know, it's again, it's not worth my righteous indignation. I don't play 40K. Nah. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was the I don't care about any of their animations. Um, I'm mm. sure I would like to watch Louise paint because I think she's an excellent painter. Oh, yeah. Um, but like, I don't care enough about the app to, to do that. There are a lot of great painters on YouTube, so, okay. <laughs> if she had a channel, I would watch it. I would certainly do that. I think she's an awesome person and a fantastic painter. But, you know, there you go. Like, I, there's there's zero percent content that interests me as part of that app. So it literally couldn't matter less to me that it's messed up. So there you go. I like the the bat reps. I thought they did a pretty nice job out of the gates. I haven't checked out the 40k one yet, but yeah, I enjoyed the the thousand pointer that, sure. that, that they did. So yeah, we'll see how those develop. I sure, that, sure. Was, that, that was well done. They put a lot of effort into that one. Uh, we got a little article on grips with Stormcast. So just wanted to quick, if anybody missed it, we, we got a little bit more info on yeah from the battle zone what these grips are going to be doing. Rocky we might. Uh, well, actually, both you guys might find this compelling. Uh, yeah, so Storm. I know I do. <laughs> I read that art. I love that. Stormcast was my first yeah. army. I saw the rules for the Griffhound got changed. I'm like, okay, you, I, chariots. I'm a chariot fan. But go yeah. on, go on. Yeah, well, basically, they got the impact hits. The Storm Strike Chariot, as you unleash, after you yeah. make a charge move, pick an enemy unit within an inch of it, roll a number of dice equal to the unmodified charge roll. So if you roll an eight, uh, you roll eight dice for each four plus a mortal wound, so pretty tasty. Good mm -hmm. stuff there. So they have the the basic chaos chariot roll. Yeah, that's yep. basically what the chaos chariot has. It's I guess the chaos right. chariot yeah. is on a five up, not a four up, but still. So, ogre charge, like the good ogre charge. Yeah, good ogre right. charge. Yeah, yeah. that probably yeah. be the better comparison. But I mean, like it's it's following a template that other chariots in the game have. They're trying yeah. to make chariots yeah. useful. It's nice. I'm okay with that. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I will never run that that chariot. So if I if I if, if it's so rules compelling that I felt okay. the need to use it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then I would uh, I would I would certainly do something else. <laughs> like it would be a very different chariot. Again, uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I want tanks, not chariots. We're in the complete wrong time ooh. period here. Okay. I want okay. stormcast tanks. Uh, huh. So there you go. That's that's my feeling on the thing. Fair enough. Uh, I'm yeah, a fan. Uh, go ahead, Marco. I was so, gonna say. So actually, it's a it's a funny bit. So, hmm. like, I'm six one. My wife's about five foot. She, really four eleven. But you know, she'll tell people five feet. So she saw the 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 chick and the dude riding together. She's like, "That's us. You have to run them." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm already sold. You're just giving me more reasons to buy the cool thing that I like. It's my thing." Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So the Vanguard Pallies, Paladors, they got improved. What, Ride the Winds Etheric used to be, uh, let's see, what was it? You had, it used to be had silly that you just stopped there. Yes. You don't need to know what it was yeah, before. It, it was like, matter. I loved it. It was a I, random dice roll and it was silly yeah. and it was bad. And now it was it's 66. just teleport around the place. Yeah. You, oh, you, whenever you make a normal move mm -hmm. or a retreat, you can instead leave and pop up nine inches somewhere else. Yeah. It went from something I couldn't care less about to, oh, uh, to uh, you know, freaking uh, amazing. Like, amazing. That's an incredible yeah. rule. Because oh, yes. Somewhere it in is that fantastic. Book, somewhere in that book, there's going to be retreat and charge. Like, yeah, it will exist. Somewhere. Yep. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's so book. It's, it's Sorry, it's such a big book, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. so book. Put that on the shirt. <laughs> um and so like once you get that that's a that's a beautiful day right there mm. right so yeah yeah great stuff i'm already thinking like excelsius has retreat and charge i'm like okay i play enough cities and uh if the lord arcanum uh on griff charger still has it i used to take the mount trait to get the extra dice just to go farther yep. mm -hmm. and now it's just the teleport and it's in place of a retreat and charge I, like I, I got gears turning but i need a book to see what the whole thing is at the end of the day so I, I see right. potential. I see potential. I'm excited. Yeah, 100%. So Griffhounds, Warning Cry, got improved. If an enemy unit, sorry, if an enemy reserve unit or mm -hmm. summoned unit is set up on the battlefield for the first time within 12 of the Griffhound unit, you can pick up to three friendly Stormcast units wholly within 12 of this unit to shoot. Any shooting, uh, any shooting has to go into the target, you know, that reserve unit or that summon mm. unit. You can't pick a different target. So, yeah, Rocco, what do you think about that one? I think my uh, Lord Castellet and his little buddy and all of the uh, the two ballistas and the the nine long strikes I have that now have to be a unit of six and then maybe a unit of three. We're going to have some options, guys. Call me crazy. Mm -hmm. If you're doing the shoot caster out like a... Jack, for me, rolling ones back in the day. Whew, that's spicy. That could be in a in a summoning meta if you're in there, and that you know they need to set up for the charge. They need to set up for objectives, and you've got a couple heroes bringing their little. But you want to bring the Lord and Parrot in anyway. You know the yep. the Lord Castellan to give plus one to save as long as that stays that way is going to be mm. a big piece for synergies. Um, yeah, I think it's a win. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Yeah, Looks yeah. Like my answer is you're reading that wrong. I hope. Okay, <laughs> that rule says the following. Like, I know, okay. I know that you just read the text. None of that okay. text is real. Oh okay? no. Okay. Here's what the text actually says. All right. Uh -huh. If you've got this bird. Yep. And three units of up to three units of shooters within mm -hmm. range of whatever their weapons are. Okay, near the burbs. Yep then nobody will set up ever within 12 inches of you. Yes, and okay. I love That's that. That's what it says, which is fine. That's still a good rule, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. like, no one's going to just... <laughs> no one's I hope going not. To just set up and get shot in the face by, like, multiple units of, of raptors and all that kind of stuff. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. it, what it means is that you have a much stronger uh, screen-out game, right? Because your yes. screen-out bubble isn't 9 inches, it's right. 12 inches in Stormcast. Meaning mm -hmm. you're much more alpha resistant if you've got the little grip hounds around to do their their borks. Yep. Right. And yeah, and even better because it's they have to be outside of twelve. There's a chance they just might not even be in a range to charge at all. 
Sure. I mean, they, they wouldn't be, yes, because they have to be outside oh, of 12. Yeah. So, I nice mean, and and easy. fine, great, easy. Yeah. Like, that just means, like, all right, if I'm playing Stormcast, I don't put my life takers in the sky. I put them on the board, and then I just charge you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hmm. Like, it it will it will necessitate certain plays. It's not a bad thing. I'm just saying, nah. if you're thinking you're going to get shots out of that, you, you know, like... Never once. Right. Like it, It's that threat. Nobody of any kind of, like... Fun with any kind of functional brain is going to set up in range <laughs> for you to just shoot them right mm -hmm. in round one and if they no. know they're going to do something later in the game they'll just kill the dumb dogs mm -hmm. right yeah and then they'll drop on you yeah and then so. it's my dog getting shot not the unit yeah and that's fine yeah like exactly. again, yeah. Yeah, yeah which again is still great right? point straight because man. Then love it that's yeah. forcing them to to, to shoot a non-optimal target again mm -hmm. wonderful right. None of these things are bad. I'm just saying there's like a... I think when we read these rules, we tend to read them and not think about the consequences of how it's going to change sure. the opponent's behavior. Oh, right? yeah. Right. And, and this you're, you're handing something to your opponent that is perfectly within their control, mm -hmm. right? Like there's no yep. part of that you control beyond the setup. No. Right? It's going to be one... You're going to get one time to do that rule right because they're going to be like, oh, hey, we're playing a friendly game. Let's see what that actually looks like in practice. <laughs> And then they're gonna get they're gonna lose their 30 demonettes because Slanesh needed more nerfs. He's like, Yeah, it's my late game summoning guys. You're the dog, try to get the last objective because Gurr ate the other one that was important. And then, oh my god, all, all 30 of my demonettes are dead. Huh. Neat. Apparently, Zoo yeah. wants to end this meeting in 40 minutes. So that's Ooh. Or, or 10 minutes or something. So okay. that's fun. That's... So okay. if that happens. <laughs> Okay. Uh, then we're going to deal with that. Sure. And I'll make a new meeting. I'm going to do that over here on the side while I make a new meeting. I see that it's time. telling me yeah. that there's a little remaining time. It had no warning about that before. It's just let me do that. So that's fine. Uh -huh. I have I'll that handle that over technology. here on the side in the next 10 me. minutes while you guys are talking. Mm -hmm. uh. So, uh, yeah, somebody pointed out that the Ride of the Winds Etheric on the Vanguard Paladors, you have to be more than one inch from all terrain and objectives. So, yep. And, of course, more than nine inch from enemy units. Yeah, just to sure. clarify that. Yep. Yeah. Good, good clarification. Again, I'm still a fan of it, even with the restrictions. Yeah. Those are healthy restrictions. They make sense. Uh, you know, another thing to make it a bit more fair. I'm fine with that. Mm hmm Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then the last thing we had here, Vince, the Dominion Cry War Cry, sorry, Dominion War Cry stats and campaign. Actually, I mm -hmm. missed this article. I actually downloaded all the stuff for uh, the Dominion. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, they added great. all the rules specifically for uh... the Swamp Bogglers and the new Stormcast. Oh, and... okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. All the new heroes have it. Um, I, I mean, I don't. So it's uh, the the orc on naked mole rat down because it shouldn't be mm. the vultures, uh, and then uh, of course everybody but Yandrasta, and mm. it it's nice you know and they actually have the the new vigilor like all the stuff that was previewed uh, the the special weapon on the annihilators have a profile on that as well, so okay. you right. know they do do more damage that that part didn't change. From what we mm. would expect, because they'll mirror, not perfectly, but it'll mirror a little bit. Um, yeah, and it's nice. So if you're into Warcry and that's your thing and you have the Dominion starter set, go, go ahead. And they also said uh, it might be something for Warcry coming on the horizon, if I remember right, as well. So it might be a new season of that, which everyone okay. was like, oh, Kill Team's the skirmish game getting all the stuff. Well, maybe Warcry will get a little more, too. Give them time. They've got an app to roll out. Yeah. <laughs> Warcry, was that what? 2019? That came yeah, out? that sounds about right. Some, yeah. Somewhere, out, somewhere around there. Yeah. It, it so, was yeah. before okay. it was before COVID. I, I remember. Mm. There was a time. At one point. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was. So um, that's what I've got for the news. I know we've got some events to talk a little bit about. Yes, we do. Yes, you yes we do. Hop over to that. I'm going to bring it up now. There All you go. Right. Cool. Yeah. 
So yeah, this I don't believe this has changed at all since last week, everybody. But there's what we've got coming up for this weekend and then September. Mm. You know, we still got Face Hammer happening, Bruce City Brawl. It's going to be 3,000 points. Uh, a bunch yeah. of others. Rock, are you going to get to any events in September? Uh, not September. There might be some local one days that aren't on the list that I might try to go out to. Um, yeah. I was my next big thing is actually uh, Du Bois. Um, I've got a buddy oh, yeah. up in uh, in upstate New York that wants to do the uh, actually the team tournament um, because he mm. couldn't get tickets to the to the uh, the main event. So we might I might for like that Saturday I might do um, Blood Bowl, but we're on a waiting list for the the main two day event on Saturday and Sunday. So we'll see what happens there. But if not, we're uh, we're leading. He does a little bit of Lumineth. I've got some deep kids. So we'll do a surf and turf, and I uh, have a fun time. And yeah. then um, later in December, my event after that is uh, in Ocean City, Maryland, uh, Shorehammer. But that's oh. that's farther out. That's yeah. That's um, because I'm going with all the guys from the Basement War Gamers, who are my actual gaming club from from uh, back when I lived uh, in the greater Philadelphia area. Because I was just like, you threw a rock over the Delaware border and you would and you would have hit me. Uh, that's how close I was to Phil. It was a great, great place, great guys and gals there. Mm-hmm. God, there's hundreds of them. They're they're a whole army mm-hmm. if they ever formed up properly. And uh, they go to all these events up and down the East Coast. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I, I don't ever hear much going on in, in Philly in terms of ALS. Well, that's the. I mean, they they um, they just did Summer Slaughter. Those are the same guys. Oh, okay. Yep. Nice. Um, and then they partnered with Martin Orlando to do the Atlantic City Open. Um, PAX Unplugged is another thing they run the Warhammer stuff for. They've got Kill Team, 40K. Oh, yeah. No, like it was uh, when I was there, the regular game of night was on a Tuesday. And yeah. you'd get like 40 people showing up to the game store to play all kinds of stuff. They didn't, oh, wow. it, That's amazing. Uh, which is funny. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. but they're so insular. And it's like we drive mm-hmm. through Valley Forge which was a beautiful drive. And I'm a, I'm a history buff and I love it. And the drive was great. And then you drive out at like like one in the morning, right? After you leave and, every, and you're just like, wow, this is spooky. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but it's a good time. Well, that's great, man. So yeah, it sounds like there's very much going on. Yep. I uh, wanted to just give a quick rundown of, so we had some events over the weekend. I mean, if folks are really interested, of course, we've got Robin so Owen, hold on. Always. I'm going to put a pause yeah. on you real quick. Okay. okay? We're not because yep. this meeting's going to end in like three minutes and forty five seconds. Oh. Is what's going to happen? <laughs> okay, that's not going to work. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is over here. I'm going to make it. Mm-hmm. We're we're going to shut this off. I'll keep talking. Chat. You'll still hear. Okay. Me. We're going to deal with a little thing here because I didn't know this would end at forty minutes. It didn't do it last time. It let me keep mm-hmm. going. So mm-hmm. I just thought it would always let me do that, but it didn't. It was only one time when we had three people. So Fair I'm gonna enough. end my little call with the two of them, bring it up on my other screen, and we're gonna and I'm gonna keep talking to you about mm-hmm. these events and stuff. And while I'm while I'm organizing the new call, chat, you tell me whether you've been to an event and what are your thoughts on uh, you going to the event. So drop that in the chat right now. Hit that like button for technical problems in the middle of a stream. It's all good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. So remember me here. as I was, chat, frozen. That's right. I'm gonna end this and then call you both back with a different thing. Okay. We'll be right back in like 30 seconds. Okay. Here we go. Cheer, buddy. Right. Cheers, guys. Mm-hmm. Everybody can still hear me. Life continues. Mm, that's an annoying noise. Now everybody gets to hear a phone. So now we're going to add somebody else to this. There we go. Oh, why didn't he pick up? Let's try it again. Oh, it's ringing. Hey, there they are. All right. See, we're all back, folks. It was just that easy. Now I'm going to be a tiny little square in the corner. 
But that's Ooh. all right. It'll be the two of you. Okay. And I'll just deal with being a tiny little square for right now. Well, okay, we're Rocco, your phone at this point. That's fine. I just, just make sure your phone's charged. Oh, yeah. I can, uh, I can switch over to Messenger over here. Hold on. You're I'm good. Just... You're good. He'll join back in a second. Isn't this fun? Isn't this just <laughs> fun? Hey, there he is. We can't hear you now because it's not using your audio. But I'll let no, you fix I'm it. I'm okay, we're okay. There we go. See, we're all break. back. I got a real, I got a real content creators mic, guys. It's crazy. I just, but it's got a big old button too. All right. Up. Oh, Vince is gone. No, it's okay. I'm here. Okay. I'm here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna mm -hmm. make you two smaller. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Sorry, everybody. That's the wrong buttons. There we go. There's that. Okay. And there's that one we're gonna talk about in a second. And there's that one that's up now. And then we're gonna come over here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're gonna grab you guys. Make you about a third of the screen. Yep. There's just some just some live reformatting. No issues there. Not at all. And funny enough, now my other camera's working, not the one built in my laptop. That's technology. Hilarious. And then we're gonna move me up mm. here. Okay. Okay. Like that and cover Tyler's face. Ooh. And then I'll be Fancy. this little square up here. There we okay. go. All right. You so love now to that's see super it. ugly. But it's fine for now. And I'll fix it for next time. Hey. There we go. And I'm mirrored, too, so that's fun. <laughs> All right, so keep going, Tyler. You were saying, let's talk about events. Yeah. I'm going to fish So it. we had a, a good number of events over the weekend all around the world. King in the North, mm -hmm. Norway. We had uh, some in the UK, just a series, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. We had three good ones in the U.S., uh, so just wanted to give a rundown of the top 10 for anybody interested. But if you want all the details, check out, I was saying, Rob and Owen's Monday show that they're always doing, their Stats Center. It is fantastic. Oh, yeah. So let's start with Blue Sky Summer Open, 30 players in Washington. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Matthew with, I'm just going to do first names. Uh, Matthew with Nalroot, he went 5-0, the only 5-0. So Sylvaneth, they are back. They are absolutely back. How about that, Rocco? I well, listen, man. I I I I'm a fan of the trees. I you know I love the Lorax. He speaks for the trees and get out of when the trees start speaking. Tree is a joke. <laughs> I even say with Living City because I just love the the uh, the new version of uh, the tree spirit aesthetic. Mm. Big fan of it. Though I gotta say, uh, my guy who uh, I've worked with on his list that got mm. second place. I'm very proud of him. If you could do the honors. Yes, sir. Jack Ballard, one and only, really ones with Zytrek. My man. In second place. Yeah, that's amazing. Congrats oh, his Jack. list is scary as all get out. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do some list trends. Maybe we can get into some of these a little bit later. Uh, but just so we got Dirk with Rikonor's Condemned, Nighthaunt going 4-1. Yeah. In, yeah. In, in third it's place. Solid showing. Yeah. Fourth and fifth, Taker Tribe, six, uh, Blister Skin. I think a lot of us thought Pleasure to Courts outside of maybe somebody somebody like uh, I am blanking uh, Bill Souza. Yeah. Someone like Bill, you know, who's a master at playing Pleasure to Courts, really good at the game in general. But I mean, there we go. Cody with Blister Skin, another Null Root, a Boulder Head, Beast of Chaos making the way in the top 10, and then mm -hmm. Host of Plistus to round out. Pretty, pretty good mix there. Yeah. It's a healthy meta when you get a little bit of everything like that. And then Sylvaneth came in there to take it. Yeah. My, my mind's blown, man. I love it. Yeah. Gateway Open, the one I went to. Uh, shout out to Jeff, his wife Courtney, and everybody involved with that one. Incredible event. Uh, we had Mergonk with Petrifix Elite going the only 5-0, uh, taking it out. If, guys, Petrifix Elite is amazing. Yeah. Uh, it I, got I Petra it. fixed, right? What, <laughs> Petra that's what we were saying? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Ignoring or reducing Ren by one across the army, machine gunning, Mystic Shield from Arkan. Yeah. Uh, free roll saves on the Mortec. About yep. everything is playable in that book right now, including the Gash. It's a really good army. Uh, Walker with Taker Tribe 4 1, getting best general. Uh, Bryce, my friend from Springfield, Springfield crew. We had four guys go up, all top 10. Did pretty well. Nice. Right? Uh, yeah. 
Rice got best destruction. Philip, another beast of chaos. Dark walkers. Go. There you go, man. That delayed went. deep strike does work. Yeah. He got best of chaos going 4 1. We had a host arcanum. I was six with best order Hagnar. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. Did you say the Beast of Chaos player got best chaos over yeah. his over? I know. It's an amazing day. Over it's host, an amazing over host day. Arcanum. Yeah. Uh, cats and dogs are just <laughs> hanging out together now. The world is it's it's a new world, gentlemen. Yep. Boulderhead, Taker Tribe, Kotal's Claw, Heavy Soros Warrior, and Legion of the First Prince rounding out the top 10 there. Nice. Gentlemen, any thoughts so far? I mean, I, look, it's the same thing. Uh, it's it's the same thing, I would say, uh, across the board. When you look mm. at all these, and we're going to talk about it later, it's a tremendous amount of variation. Yeah. You know, like Autumn Lotus said, to be fair, I wouldn't trust these numbers when people aren't all coming out for games. I mean, I disagree. Like, let's say, I wouldn't trust the overall stats of percentages yet because we don't have enough games in for that to look at, like, win rate and think about that stuff. That's no. fine. That I agree with. But I think it's absolutely true that we're seeing a much broader meta than we had previously seen in 2.0. Just yeah. the nature of the game being so much more focused on, like, the things like battle tactics and the way you take the... Um, the way that you deal with objectives... The yeah. reality is is that you can score a win with good play because it's so much of a... Like, this edition feels like much more of a skill test than anything previous. And so yeah. if you're piloting, you know, a lot of different things, you can come out on top. Like, that's yeah. the simple reality of the thing. Right. Yep, I, I agree. There yeah. was a, I was in a one-day tournament local here out of uh, Huzzah Hobbies out in Virginia. Hmm. Um run by uh, Garrett from uh, Best Coast Pairings fame there. Okay. And he, uh, what was it? My, my second round uh, game was actually against a clubmate who was running Gargant. And it was, I forget the name of it, but it's uh, the three objectives. It's old shifting objectives. Sure. And, you know, he, he took first turn. He moved up. And with my uh, Living Cities, at, at, when it was my turn, I only could play for one objective, but I played for the primary. Um, I chose my battle tactic of, like, killing a, a Mega Gargant or killing it, you know, so I killed the monster, squared my battle tactic, took the uh, the important objective. I did it with a with a monster myself in the end. Mm. And all of a sudden, I, I was either tied or ahead by a point with however the math worked out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's just that the, the game stay closer. If you're especially if you're on the new the, the good missions that are more new style scoring. They yes. tend to stay closer because it's like you generally score four to six. That's kind of where mm -hmm. it is. Like you score four to six, they score four to six. You score four to six, they score four to six. And it's sort of in turn three, four, when you actually tend to accomplish some kind of points differential is what I tended to notice, right? I agree. Uh, I agree. So, um, you know, it's about making those good trades up to that point, stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that we've seen a lot of different armies reaching into the meta being in top yeah. tens showing up in you know either 5-0 or 4-1 brackets things you wouldn't necessarily expect I, I think it is pretty a pretty wide meta yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and we could probably say nash convents maybe in hobby go into a little bit uh but then uh you know shout out to jack armstrong making his return uh, of course going 5-0 adjust series taking it out thunder lizard also toby nice. meadows was the other 5-0 Toby had done really well with that double cabbage, a uh, couple of war channers, weird knob shaman, 10 brutes, two by three pigs. He, I think he went four one at his last event with that coming in like second. He came in second again, Legion of the first Prince. Oh man. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting list. So, but you yeah, to see it. yeah. Amazing, amazing variety guys. It's really great. Yeah. When you look oh. at all the different, there was a lot of tournaments this weekend, right? Yeah. When you look at all the top fives, top tens, whatever, you know, whatever you feel is, is reasonable. There was a lot of different. Uh, uh, there's a lot of different armies occupying that space, right? Oh um, yeah. I mean, seeing Sylvaneth on top in that uh, in that West Coast GT was like, man, that was an amazing. It was an amazing moment. It was a moment I didn't. I don't think any of us thought was necessarily coming, right? And yet no. here it was. Right. Left field us. came out of there, man. Just. With, with a very different list than what you saw in a lot of the UK yeah. stuff. Like, it wasn't a sort of AoE bomb out of the Warsong Revenant, right? No. Nope. 
So no, a bunch of a bunch of dryads, Drycha, yeah. Warsong Revenant, but I mm -hmm. I can't recall if he had a spell portal or not. No, there the was no Warsong did. Revenant, no Drycha. It was or, sorry, there was no oh. Warsong Revenant, no portal. But there was Drycha. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, there was, was Drycha, Alorial, Tree Lord Ancient, Durthu, two branch wraiths, four by ten yeah. dryads. Gotcha. Yeah, that's right. The no Kernoth list that you just yeah, look no, at it and you yes. go, huh. <laughs> no huh. Kernoth. Uh, yeah. At any rate, it yeah. was great. It was great stuff. Yeah. So we'll we'll get into it more when we talk about the the broadness of it. But it was a lot of yeah. lot of really good tournaments this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And also shout out to uh, my dude uh, Sean Blake in the chat there. Yeah, we're getting trees some love one way or the other. There you go. There you go. All right. So gentlemen. Uh, any other news? Anything else we want to cover in the news section? I think we're good. All right. Yeah. In which case, then, let's get to some pick of the week. Okay. So, pick of the week. Uh, Rocco, you want to start us off? Oh, sure. Hopefully my camera's not uh, totally gone here. Oh, so no, you're good, man. It's been, it has been hey. rock solid. It was clearly Zoom that was doing it. For the future, I'm All going right. to embed Skype. That's what we're going to have to use. I'll now know. Sure. And, well, that's what we'll be doing from now on. So, there we are. At any rate, right. life continues. Uh, yeah. Talk about it. Hit me. All right. So as you can see, I'm a man of many hats. And uh, it's a literal for me, not just a saying. And this is my re-rolling ones hat because I am their community manager for their Discord. Uh, also, if you don't know me, hi, I'm uh, Rocco, ya boy. Um, I have my own YouTube channel where I teach people how to play Warhammer. And we go from very beginner stuff all the way up to tournament uh, tips and tactics and I try to make the video shorter to be like a like a 10 to 15 minute, sometimes a 20 minute blurb instead of like a three hour slog. Mm -hmm. And that way we can be very like, hey, I don't know. Show wait that, a I'm minute. Not sure, yeah. I'm not sure if there's any shows out here that have three no. hour, three hour shows. No, never. Hey, listen, I hold the record for the longest rant cast guest too at like six <laughs> hours. We can, t I could talk to paint drying if we got to go for time. Oh. Um, and uh, if you want to see me actually uh, use what I talk about, so I'm not talking out my butt, uh, over at the Pants Mafia AOS uh, YouTube channel, I am part of a path to glory there where I'm bringing Soul Blight Grave Lords. Hmm. And uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to spoil the last video that just went up, but uh, your boy was, uh, I was 3 0 going into my last video. I, I'm solidly in first place. You got to see if I kept that up there. Hmm. It was a good time. That's Very good. nice. I, I will. Uh, all of that will be linked down below. Tyler, what about yourself? You. What do you got for pick of the week? I really liked your recent video, Rocco, on the whether to go first or not. That's Aww. one thing that stood out to me in 3.0 is that I've had to break out of the 1.0 and 2.0 pattern of always giving my opponent first turn if I have a yes. choice just to play with that double because that is much less the case now in my experience with 3.0. Oh yeah, you you really sometimes just want that extra command point too to do an extra combo, or they you know have a move up, or you just walk up onto the point and say like, okay, you can't move me. DPS check me. There's yeah, exactly. And then there's battle tactics going into it. There's all kinds of extra moving parts. Yep. But that's later in this episode too. We're going to be talking about that. <laughs> we will. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. So two quick ones: Flying Monkey Con. So yeah, two two tournaments over the last. A uh, few weekends here. Fly Monkey Con, there was a review of it by the Iron Realms podcast with Buck Paul. They had Charles Fox, the TO. Just really good discussion. Kind of an old school Warhammer mm. tournament pod going through their games. Uh, sure. enjoyed that Is that one. Paul Wright? Paul Wright, yep. Yeah, no, I've helped him with uh, Deepkin List before. He goes by uh, Paul is right on uh, a few different uh, things for his different socials. Great guy. Yep, great guy, great list, great player. Yeah. He's he was rocking a double turtle and go trick went four one, very scary list. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. He is, he's good too, which is the best part. He is. Yeah. He's, ah. he's he's very solid. So yeah, that was good. And then Vince, what was my? I am drawing a blank on my second pick that I sent you. Let me look it up. I didn't have it in front of me. It was Paul. This was fun. Was it Paul? It was oh hard. yeah, yeah, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I just caught Paul Conti's new video, Radio Free Hammer Hall, breaking down the battle tactics, very apropos to tonight's discussion. Yes. So, yeah. It was a great video. I watched it too. Also linked down below already. Uh, my uh, pick of the week, yes, indeed. Uh, my pick of the week is going to be the Honest Wargamer Stat Center from this week, 
Uh, if you want to hear mm -hmm. all about a deep dive of the tournament results that we sort of discussed quickly, the lists and all of that, of course, it is Rob and the Owen Jackson. <laughs> Oh uh, my, Owen Jackson, what a doll. What a guy. Getting together to talk about the multitudinous events this weekend and uh, mm -hmm. the incredible results coming out of many of them, uh, including uh, our, uh, our, our friend of the show. He's been downgraded to just friend of the show. Uh, Tom Lyons, who mm -hmm. took uh, best overall and best painted at NashCon. So uh, it was a great weekend for him. Tom had... Uh, five, uh, you know, was it wasn't a bunny run? I'll say that much. He had some, he had some tough yeah. games, and yeah. uh, he was playing KO, which, as you know, he was firmly behind to being. Oh, there's so bad yes. in the current meta. And there's no way I can actually win. And was running yep. his mouth, and then he goes five and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, certainly, he was aided by the two list format of of NashCon, which I do stand behind and think more tournaments should adopt. I think it's absolutely the right way. Like, you want to know how to balance the meta? You create the two-list mm -hmm. format. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Like, it is one of the easiest ways to balance the meta because it stops skews dead. Yeah. Because you can have anti-skew in the lists, right? It's just mm -hmm. like... It, it, so, anyways. Uh, so, Tom won it with all with KO. Uh, he had a convincing victory. He was something like 11 points over his nearest competitor for his first place win. Uh, yeah. So it was great. It was a very happy moment for him uh, to to get that get both of his swords. Uh, so yes, it was he did. Well Those are real yes. freaking swords. That yes. was... David's trophies are real swords. Yes, I I need to go to the Midwest. See what all y'all are doing. I'm just playing for money. <laughs> by me, this is just money. And I won a city's book at one of the tournaments I won, which is what started that whole path. But man, mm. swords. Uh, yes, the somebody asked, uh, Frogom asked, what is the two-list format? Sure, so I'll just explain very quickly. NashCon, uh, the tournament we just did last weekend, uses a two-list format. And somebody said it's like War Machine and Hordes. That's very uh, apropos. Um, effectively, you can bring two lists. They have to be from the same faction, mm -hmm. though they may contain different units. They may have any change from as minor... Uh, as a single artifact or something like that being different up to completely different units and constructions. Uh, and what that allowed people to do was have different sort of lists. For example, one of Tom's lists had Gotrek and one did not, which was, you know, like Gotrek is very powerful, but he does have weak spots. There mm -hmm. were a couple people running Drakfoot there, for example, and Gotrek is not a winner uh, against no. that build. No. Nope. Um, but also... It's still powerful because the Drakfoot person then knows exactly what list Tom is going to play, right? Mm -hmm. Like when Tom yeah. shows them these two lists, yeah. the Drakfoot player goes, I can play whatever list I think is best against the one I know you're playing because you're yeah. definitely not taking your Gotrek list. No. Nope. So at any rate, it was uh, it's a great format. It allows for if you want either a minor change or a transformative sort of sideboard and um the you know some people you can still maybe have a skew list and maybe somebody has a normal list but you have better chances to counter them because you don't have to go with one list it does just provide for more interesting meta as i mm. looked up and down the the tables there was just a That's lot true. more there was a lot of variance in those top you know eight tables of what all was playing um and uh and so it was it it creates sort of an interesting situation Mm -hmm. um people would normally have sort of uh yeah people normally have had uh, took sort of two different lists that were interesting in two different ways right mm. um so yeah at any rate um i see some people saying like it encourages skews i understand your the the argument there in this case what we've seen is that it either either most people bring pretty minimal shifts and run kind of be hard behind one list mm -hmm. uh or, or they use one to be like a specific, to do a specific thing, and then they use a different list to do a different thing, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. kind of how it comes down. Um, and so, like, generally they'll have one that's asking a hard question and one that's giving a hard answer is often how it works out, right? Yeah. But anyways, it, we found it to be very, very, very positive. Um, so, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and I yes, think... crazy. Oh, sorry. I just want to say one thing. Yes, crazy horse. I did realize I said the Midwest. They're all Midwesterners. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Tennessee is the dirty South. 
<laughs> also, is Jacob Barry there? So I really shouldn't forget where it is. Sure, there were there were somebody said what's the Archeon per table ratio? I believe there were uh, seven Archeons in the venue and seven Gotrex or six Archeons and seven Gotrex, something like that. Okay. Over sixty four mm. players. Um, oh, that's the nice. the person who took best chaos and third overall had. Archeon in one of their two lists and it was my round five game. So there you go. Because we were we were effectively playing for third from where we were, I think. Mm -hmm. On table yeah. three. Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I on paper, I, I think it's easy to think that the two list format would lead to more skews and would just generally be a net negative. Mm -hmm. And but I, I agree with Vince. I mean, that's not what we've seen over the the years with the data and information coming out of NashCon, and so yeah, uh, it's it's at least worked at NashCon. I don't. We haven't seen this two list yeah. format at many tournaments, so maybe there would be some new information that would come to light mm -hmm. if we saw more tournaments. You know, something that, like the macro view of it would change. Mm -hmm. But but sure. so far, it's been it's been quite positive. And and just as a question, because it's not an ITC event, right? I don't believe no, so. No, it is not. So, so it's not really drawing that kind of a crowd. Like, you go in there to try to win a freaking sword, which is very cool. It, it seems uh, like, even though it's a tournament, maybe a little bit more relaxed. Sure, the lists are hard because hmm. you're still getting the Archeons and the Go Tricks, but it seems to attract a certain kind of crowd. Sure. And I think that that works in its favor. I you mean, know, yeah. it's in my round two, uh, I was playing against a Marathi Go Trek dock list. Right. Okay. And... <laughs> Jacob Barry was like a table or two tables down from me, and in the middle of the game, he was like, "Oh, come on!" and he ripped off his shirt and then was playing shirtless in tiny bike shorts for the rest. Yeah, of the game. yeah. So, I had him at ACO. He's a trip, man. He is. He is. He he took best sports again. He wins best sports like he's I uh, like he, like it's his job. He is a a he is a unique competitor. Anyways, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh... so. Uh, yes, check out the Honest Wargamer. That's our picks of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, right on. Okay. We're going to close that so that doesn't beep anymore because that's really annoying. And uh, yeah, we're going to then move on to some hobby time. All Ooh. right, gentlemen. Glad I just fixed Rocco, my camera. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Rocco, what have you been hobbying on? What's, uh, what's on your table? Tell so... me about your hobby time. So like I was, so uh, I was also just a part of the animosity campaign with um, a bunch of narrative stuff going on, which was a great experience, and it got me to do more of my writing because I'm also known for my short stories and stuff. But it also got me to doing like little conversions on my Deepkin, um, a nice little potato-ish cam. Uh, I did a like the the squig, the squid, the squid face coming out of my idol on to be an eldritch horror. Nice. My Deepkin is painted to be the. Uh, the horrors of the deepkin that fun little like black black and white with uh sin city like a red as an accent color from blood dripping everywhere kind of style and it's definitely been helping me uh get my butt in gear and that's why some of my tournaments like i said i was looking out in november december because i i got to prime and paint all that and that's not my uh my strong suit in the hobby mm -hmm. but i found a nice um a nice paint scheme that works for me that's a lot of dry brushing that um it works and i'm happy for it cool man very nice yeah, that, looks, that looks sweet thank you love it uh tyler what about yourself man what did you would you uh yeah you, what what uh you you went to a tournament this weekend you, as you mentioned you took yeah, best order yeah. wait well done well done thank you sir very yeah. nice yeah so i was one darn more tech guard away from top table round five but it sounded <laughs> like a very similar wow. experience to, to you vince it was uh, indeed <laughs> but yeah just couldn't yeah that patch effects amazing yeah daughter's game they yeah. you know it's only the mortal wounds that you have a choice so well we yeah. were playing in veins of gur and i was just playing conservatively playing for round four and five went in all went in on rounds four and five didn't get the priority in five which definitely probably would have sealed it as well and just came up one more tech short so hey it happens good game uh, against morgan great player and uh but yeah let's see i played stormcast two SOB, Two Sons, both okay. Taker Tribes. They're, uh, savage, they're brutal on Savage Gains. Yeah, they you know, are. That, that kick in the four point, turning into a two point, we were playing it. I don't know if mm. everybody's playing it this, this way, but we were playing it where any objectives in the middle, 
even if you hold all three, like two or three in the case of against Giants, you're only getting two points. You don't right. get the correct way to play. Yes, that's the correct also way to play. Yeah. Yeah. You're not doing two per objective. It's not, I'm not two doing per. two per objective. Yeah. Oh. So that that was rough because it yeah. was very difficult to keep Giants. Uh, it was Walker. I think he's a viewer of this show. Uh, okay. Good guy. He played Giants incredibly well. He was running a gate breaker and a crack and as nice. a as a power pair and just yeah. I think the mistake I made. I'm accustomed to giving if I have the choice, giving my opponent top of two when Marathi is still fully buffed, and I probably should have taken it and just yeah. actually pinned him in his deployment. Yeah. And I think that would have helped in terms of the scoring sequence. Mm-hmm. Um, a few things kind of got off that game, but he played it really well. And I almost clawed it back, but not quite. Mm-hmm. So, but no, uh, awesome tournament. Uh, nice. we'll, get in, we'll get into a few things with it that, that were done differently than traditional, you know, so far out of the book 3.0. Yeah. That I wanted to comment on, but yeah, no, good time. I'm excited. Yeah, cool. for myself, uh, I did not get as much time to hobby this week as I was hoping uh, because mm-hmm. I was at a tournament. So I went to, I went to NashCon, obviously, as we mentioned. Uh, ended up going three one and one, so I did get the the almost impossible to achieve draw. Yeah. Uh, ironically, it was against uh, Noah, who is a fantastic player. He's I think he's on like the ETCT or Worlds team or something like that. He's like their captain, I think. I don't I don't mm-hmm. remember exactly how it is. Mm-hmm. He's somebody with that who's involved with worlds where they have to go and do the 2.0 thing. Mm. I'm, yeah. I'm not tapped into that. Yeah. Whole scene, so, um, mm. but he was a great player. He was also running cities of Sigmar Tempest. Eye. So it was, oh, Temp- it was a Tempest eye off, but he had the dwarves bridge 420 blaze it list. Mm-hmm. Um, he never bridged the dwarves. So that was, you know, I did manage to hold him off that. Okay. Uh, and it came down to a hard draw. Uh, mm. So that was a good cities off. Uh, like a complete tie, same number of grand strategies, same number of battle tactics, exact same nice. score, down the yeah. line draw. Um, that is my, really impressive. That happened was, that way. It, it was a uh, it was a heck of a game. Uh, yeah, my 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 run was FEC. Uh, uh, so it went FEC, then Marathi, Gotrek, Doc, then Cities, Tempest Eye, Four Twenty, Blaze It, then mm-hmm. uh, Squig Herd, uh, the Maws of Jork. Oh, and nice. then that's cool. Uh, and then host of the yeah, the dude was doing real well. Um, yeah. I think after so I beat him in round four, and I think his round five was against my round three opponent. So he had to play two yeah. Tempest Eyeless in a row, oh, which was Ooh. unfortunate probably for him. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and then my last round was against Anthony Trantinelli, who is mm-hmm. the I believe top ranked ITC player in the country right now. Yes, and, he is. You had uh, a run yourself there, man. <laughs> and he is an amazing player and a super nice guy. And mm-hmm. uh, definitely mm-hmm. given David uh, some run for, for the most attractive man in American uh, Warhammer. Let me just say Ooh, that. I mean, he's... Wow. That's, that's sacrilege there. I don't know what that's to tell hollow, you. That's hollow I mean, ground. I have you seen that. Jack lately on his last video there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, there's, 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 we'll, we'll do the calendar show sometime. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so... The um, but he was a great player. He was running a host of the wait, host of the ever chosen. No, Knights of the Empty Throne. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. running Knights of the Empty Throne. So he had you know the six Baron Guard. And this yep. was in power and numbers where if there's battle line, you can't take the objective. My battle line was three by five outriders. His battle line was twenty Marauders, twenty Marauders, and twenty Chaos Warriors. Uh, with both <laughs> Marauders having their own pocket war shrine to buff them. Uh, Ooh. so. Yeah. It was at a bit of a downside, it, but it was a it was a real really fun game. I think he made a comment. I'll paraphrase him here slightly, but I, I enjoyed this comment. He ended up winning the mm-hmm. game. It was fourteen thirteen to him. He won at the end. Uh, mm-hmm. He won on a single priority roll that came down. He rolled a three. I needed to roll a three to retain priority because mm-hmm. I had gone first in that turn. If I had rolled a three plus, then sure. I could have burned both the points and I would have won the game because he was out of battle tactics to achieve and yeah. uh, and I would have. I would have got, there was no more. Those are the last two objectives on the board. There was literally nothing yeah. else to score. I had already killed out his grand strategy. I was mm-hmm. going to accomplish mine. So I would have won, but I rolled a one against his three. He won the priority. Mm. He burned ah. both points and he beat me by one point. So such mm. is life, you know, all yeah, came down to a single dice was... roll. Um, but it was funny. He said something to the effect of when I first started list, I thought it was going to be easy because your list looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I said, "Hey, I understand. You know, it's uh, that's that was the nature of this insane Tempest Eye thing I had put together. 
<laughs> but uh, but it was fun and it was a very mm. unique list and I was it was a lot of uh, yeah. it was a very interesting list to run so I, I had a great time. Anthony was like super nice, super gracious, mm. an incredibly great player, like a duh. Mm. And, oh yeah. uh, I'd play him again in Warhammer anytime. He ended up getting my favorite game vote because I mean it was just like it was to the nines, man, the whole time. Yeah. Like it was it was a game five of game fives. So nice. Can't complain awesome. about that. Uh, and so. Mm uh i i'm sure that uh, you know that that list is scary as because those 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 uh six varen guard are just about impossible to kill like sure. it's <laughs> it's 30 wounds on a two up save ignoring a lot of rend for most of the game yeah you know when you put it that way yeah okay i can sure. see some issues yeah i mean they're just because they're usually like anywhere from plus two to three to save most rounds. yeah yeah mm-hmm. and they can get access to a, a spell ignore too right oh yeah they had two spell ignores they have a built oh, spell ignore on their shield, and then Zinch also gives them another spell ignore. So yeah, another you can't hit them with magic. Yeah, so they're they're basically mm. magic proof. Okay. Um, okay. So they're they're not easy to bring down. Uh, anyways, it was a great game and a great time. And now I'm back to painting my uh, storm rats. That's what we're on about now. So uh, <laughs> here's the next one. He's very early in progress. I've have I have three mm. done. This nice is number four. So I'm getting close to a whole okay. unit uh once i have five i'll have a unit done won't that be exciting <laughs> hey uh, man i'm a fan of skig you know if we ever right. go back to the game in hiatus is ready. They're, they're coming together slowly it, it takes a while i've worked the recipe and i have it down to about 12 hours per per model now so uh without mm. the base so that's pretty reasonable that that seems doable mm. that's wild uh, so more power to you, man. I like mm. I said, I found a way to dry brush my stuff to make it look halfway <laughs> decent. That is, I know for playing games, I'm painting, and that is a, that is pressure you got on you. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. So, um, yeah, there. I really like the scheme, and I really love how it's turning out. Although it does take a, it takes oodles of time, but that's fine. So, mm-hmm. Again, it's all worth it. It's all worth it for my beautiful Skaven. Ratcast. They are. Mm-hmm. You do such a good job, man. Oh well, thank mm. you. That's not. I wasn't fishing for a compliment, but I appreciate oh, that very oh. much. All right. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, lay. Uh, lay. I'm gonna say lay. But Rigby says I haven't played since Third Ed. Vince's channel has dragged out my old minis from the attic. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. Will the Ratcast feature in any future videos? Oh yes. I can't do this much work on an army and not make videos <laughs> out of it. Like. Making videos takes a lot of time, so yes, they were they're gonna be in some videos, you bet. Very nice. That is Very correct. nice. Uh all right. So gentlemen, shall we get to our main topic this week? Absolutely. I'm down. All right. So our thoughts so far. Uh let me go ahead and grab that timestamp. Mm. All right. Uh all right, so cool. Thoughts so far on AOS 3.0. Before we get into any specifics, without going into anything we're going to cover, I just want to do a quick temperature check here. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you hate it and wish we had never made this edition move and are angry about everything, 10 being you are... Uh, five seconds away from hitting leave meeting and going and wanting to play another Warhammer game right now. Mm. Where mm. do you find yourself after your experiences in 3.0 thus far? Rocco, hit me. Eight. Eight, okay. Yeah, no, I am. I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying the extra tactical depth of all these extra decisions you have to make. You know whether to to do the, the the fallback and the movement phase. You know, trying to set up better unleashed hells, trying to go where uh, with armies and builds. With the uh, do, do you go the one drop? Do you go with mm-hmm. some of these new battalions? Do, I'm big on hunters of the heartlands myself, so a lot of my lists end up being four drops. Some yeah. people do the uh, the double battle regiment to do extra stuff. Some people mm-hmm. fish for all the different artifacts. There there is a lot more. We can get crunchy with it. Mm-hmm. And if you want to do that, you're free to. And if not, throw it all in a battle regiment and then get into the crunch somewhere else. Yep. You know, yep. Watch Chad, your I want to know your number two, by the way. 
chat, hit me with that number. Drop it in the comments. While mm. you're already typing, why not move your mouse and hit the like button too? You're already <laughs> typing a number. You're so close. Just hit That's, like. That's it's right there. Absolutely. I mean, and don't forget to subscribe too. Those are these That's... are all good things you could do. That are all buttons yeah. roughly in the same area as where you're typing a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler, true. where are That's you? True. Yeah, an eight feels about right. Maybe eight and a half. I'm not sure I'm Ooh. quite at a nine, but I'm loving the addition. Yeah, similar to Rocco. Like, I think you know, there's a lot of your comments. I'm not sure. You know, like, what's the one, one and a half that's not there yet? I, I think it's. Stormcast uh, Club. Excuse me. Yeah. All right, I have a little. Some of the. Yeah, some of the problem, rules. Right. <laughs> some of the problematic units, you know, like, there, there definitely are. You know, some of the edges are, are pretty rough right yeah. now. Uh, but uh, the games have been incredible. I've played 10 tournament games so far the last few weeks, mm -hmm. yet to have a loss that wasn't incredibly close. And part of, you know, part of it is I'm not finishing all five rounds. I'm getting to like round four in some of these games, which is on me. I've been known to not play mm -hmm. quite fast enough, particularly early in my first round. So that's, okay. yeah, loving, loving the addition. Uh, yeah. I'm, could say you know say a lot more later about it but I, I think it's pretty pretty fascinating okay all right right on yeah. uh i will say i'm at a solid eight as well it's a, it's a universal number across <laughs> this this uh this yeah. cast uh I, there are things Born that i think it. are temporary like i want the faq where are we at with our uh, yeah. seven week slash four week <laughs> faq right uh seriously release the faq my goodness gracious uh, I'd love it if we got some battle tomes, but at the same time, maybe not, uh, because I'm not sure I'm going to love everything that's in those battle tomes with all the grand strats and battle tactics that might be delivered, but I guess we'll see on that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are some edges there. There are some things. I worry about stuff like the complexity, especially for newer players, um, yes. especially when combined with certain armies. Those are real challenges that I, I'm not sure they're, they've really directly answered and, yeah. and that I think are, are problems. Um, mm -hmm. but uh but on the whole i have like i mean i went played five games this weekend got back and i could have played another game the next day you know like it was That's the dream it was it i i really enjoy it i really love the the i don't know i really love how all the different units feel what i'll say like i i will say that i feel like i'm playing a lot more interactive game mm -hmm. but that comes with a cost yeah. Right? yeah that's the answer uh but yeah solid eight when looking through the chat i see lots of looks like Lots of basically six through nines. There's a couple fives floating around, but I didn't see anything really too much lower than a five. So that's good stuff. That's yeah. great. Uh, okay, so good. 7.9, Spencer. Perfect. Yes, I see I see lots of sevens, eights, nines, lots of stuff like that. Uh, so, okay, rock on. That's good. I think the... it's I think it's really solid. Yeah. We just need to sand down a few edges, and I think we're in a good place here, like maybe by releasing yeah. an FAQ. No, that's fair. That, you know, and... Also, if that new book could drop so I can say or see if this video I want on everybody's favorite ally, the Knight Azeros, to reroll ones to hit, still has that rule. That'd be cool. Yeah, we're all we're all waiting. I, look, that's just the thing. I'm happy to keep my Knight of Zeros letting me reroll ones for as long right? as they want to let me do that because I have a feeling that rule is going away. Yeah. Uh oh, no, no oh, doubt. It's, it's gone, gentlemen. Look, if I it's would... plus one to hit everything within 10 inches instead, I'm going to be like, yep, fine, I'm good. <laughs> sure, right. Cheaper Hurricaneum, okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, hello, Hurricaneum number two. <laughs> now it's a Luminarch for me. I just, I just, right. Changed That's, the top, I see but... no issues here whatsoever. So, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, all right. You what guys, you, you, you did remind me about the, the, the potential for Gotcha Hammer, Remember Hammer, is never higher, never been higher. No. In, in my in my experience like i've never oh, had to play man. i mean i've got like third i'm up to like 30 tokens playing daughters of cain I, two mm -hmm. things i mentioned to you vince going to this show is that i'm going to mm -hmm. start writing out my opponent's battle tactics for their turn and putting it right in front of my face oh so, i do that all the time and, it's it's yes i have a notebook i bring a legal pad with me and yeah. start writing stuff down oh uh, man yeah uh, there's definitely more of an element of, of member hammer of gotcha hammer like you know, yeah. um, Dose Green said, should we talk about complexity creep yet? I mean, not yet, but it's going to be a topic. Like, we mentioned it a little in our big challenges of 3.0 show. Yes. Because, like, we, we did talk about it already. What I really want to save that for is, again, once we start seeing all these different battle tomes and what they contain, and, you know, like, 
do they mm. do the appropriate things and simplify some of these choices out or do they uh or, or do they go the opposite direction i have a feeling i know which way we'll end up uh but you i'm know, hopeful like, it's question yeah. mark there there you go uh, that's the yeah, appropriate question mark uh, uh yeah. but yeah i mean that's like but we'll see but we'll see yeah uh, all right yeah um, PSI 915 says third feels too much like 40k right now with new missions. PSI, I'd love to know what you mean by that. I don't. I, that's I don't know 40k well enough. That's me. Uh, that's me. Like the, the score the one, score two, score more kind of thing, and then you have they pick yeah, secondary before the game. Yeah, you mean like just on the, the objective scoring or what? I'd, I'd be interested. I could okay. see that. Uh, all right. So yeah, let's talk about some. So what we're going to do in this show is our thoughts. We've broken our thoughts into several different topics. Okay, mm. so just things that we thought deserved either a fresh look or something like that. So the mm. first one here is missions uh, okay. or battle plans or scenarios or whatever you want to think of them as. That's fine. I've separated them here in the most sort of simple way possible into good, neutral, and bad. In my estimation, after playing through all of these, I have played every one in the book now, most of them probably multiple times. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And because I'd say I'm after the tournament, I'm, I know I'm over 30 games, but I don't know how many more beyond that. So, you know, it's somewhere between like probably 30 and 40 plus games. Not, nah, same. Yeah. And, and throw in some of the new Path to Glory stuff, too. I got some thoughts on that, but that, we're, that's not what we're here for. <laughs> right, right, right. So the point is, we've gotten some. We've had a chance to round this all out, right? To to play through all this stuff to really get an experience. Yeah, and and I divide them up into good. It's Savage Gains, First Blood, Feral Foray, The Vice, Marking Territory, and Power Struggle. Although I'll say, mm. Marking Power Struggle needs an asterisk because that's uh, assuming we get an FAQ answer so that the mission is actually playable with a sense of rules that we can understand. And yeah. Marking Territory is the worst for Gotcha Hammer. Maybe your oh, se- okay. maybe second worst. Because tell people the, will just tell the people what the game. Well, you just play bad if you do that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah. get good. Get, okay, get, I see get good. good. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Marking territory is obviously a new knife to the heart, where the combination of sight yeah. and shift, uh, plus the way that the the mission wins out, where you made your victory, is you know somebody yeah. takes a somebody takes a point in round two, they control three points. It flips to to round two. They gain. They they get priority. They're just going to go second. Remove yours. They win. Yeah. It just yeah. instantly happens. Hey, hey yeah. guys, don't let your opponent do three, that. Yeah, play, no. play conservatively enough. Build anyway. Sure, there are ways to answer it, but <laughs> yeah. it's like again, yeah. that's a very unfriendly scenario, mm. right? Like that is a yeah. so. Yeah. It is what it is. Neutral, and the vice is fun. The vice is super fun. My problem with the vice is that like, if you have a mega monster. Mm-hmm. This is my only problem with the vice. Like, we, let's we can l- let me let me read the whole. They can, people can see the whole list. So let's yeah. just start going through these for once. So okay. Like, I'm gonna let's talk about our thoughts on each of these just quickly. Savage gains. Mm-hmm. We need the FAQ answer. It should be two if you hold you know any, not two for each. That's how it was ruled at Nashcon. Sounds like it was ruled your way at that at the correct way in your game as well or your tournament yeah. as well, Tyler. Do you have any other problems with savage gains? I think it's a fantastic scenario top to bottom. Like, giants are super strong in there, admittedly, because they can mm. kick things around. Like, that's not, you know, sure. it is what it is. But yeah. I think it's a great scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 I, it's, it's, yeah, Rocco, what do you think? I, You know, and I had it ruled the other way where the middle objectives were each worth two. Mm. Um, and it was still fun. It was still fun, playable. It, it was a good time. Um, no complaints. It was, I played... Uh, my living cities versus uh, Nurgle, the uh, the ones where they I, I, when they die in, in melee on a two up they blow up, and I actually had a Frost Phoenix just hold the line so well with that Nick mm. wound trait, and it, I yeah, was yeah. just just stole every objective. I never died. I was never in threat of dying. It was a great time. Yeah, nice, nice. Mm. Uh, yeah. First blood. So, so PSI did say the hold, hold many, hold more, and the battle tactics feels too much like you and your opponent are not playing the same mission, but it's a similar one. It's interesting because okay. my experience has been exactly the opposite. Uh, like, in my estimation, the hold one, hold two, hold more was the best mm-hmm. thing they did because it keeps the scores contained. All the yes. missions yes. that play like that yes. are actually, to me, the good missions because yes. 
they like what tends to happen is round one you'll score four to six you're trying to eke out small advantages you bring down a monster you know what you you or you complete your battle tactic with a monster or something like whatever right you're trying to yeah. eke for that one point but points mm -hmm. remain relatively close in the good scenarios you know round one two usually even three right you don't get blowouts where somebody can just run mm -hmm. up the clock yeah. You know, yeah. like super high, and then you're just like, oh, I, I guess I can't mathematically win this. Like that just very rarely happens in, in the good mm. base scenarios, and that's because of the one, two, three, uh, one, two more, I should say, scoring system, right? Where you can score one or two or three points off the the main objectives. And what mm -hmm. I found is it kept games interesting and even and kept people playing and playing for the win, even when they had reduced resources. It gives you a chance to come back more. Like, it just mm. felt good. Also, like, the ability to, yeah, pay attention to your opponent's battle tactics and deny them, again, fe feels really good. We'll talk a little bit more yeah. about battle tactics and strategies in a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, First Blood. Basic scenario. Like, it is the basic templatized scenario of this edition. Mm -hmm. I have no issues with it whatsoever. Other than yeah. the fact that they added the whole vantage point thing just to make it feel like it had something going on. And my honest mm. answer is, like, yeah. you don't actually need to care about it. It doesn't actually yeah. matter. I've never once, like, if I happen to have the vantage point, cool. If I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like I just move on with my life and right. go about scoring my battle tactics. Exactly. Like, a command point is not worth actually disrupting your battle strategy for. So. No. Yeah, I find that one to be the the best of the three objectives in the middle, or one of the best, at least. Yeah. The, I, li I like the space that we have between us there's mm -hmm. quite a quite a bit of space between the deployment zones which is a that's rarity fair. because yeah because, because it's on the 22 because inch, it's right? on the diagonal it's on, on the, the diagonal, diagonal. Yeah. yeah okay but it's the three blocks on the diagonal. Oh, yep. Yep. yep 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 so that's that's been nice getting a little more space in there yeah has has been mm -hmm. has been cool so yeah big fan of that one yeah i agree the, the way that that one spreads you out actually mm -hmm. means you've got quite a no man's land in there yeah. and so the three objectives because they're also on the hypotenuse yeah. right and like that's why veins of gur and tectonic interference the other the other like primary sort of three ones uh mm. are in yeah. neutral for me one they're very random so they're mm. not really skill testing and two they're only 11 inches apart right mm. in there or sorry yeah. uh, 15 inches apart i apologize 15 inches apart and they're just too close right whereas yep. the the vertical being on the hypotenuse actually makes a big difference um, yeah because you get a lot more space in between the two given especially and, where you start at and and i'll be honest i wasn't the biggest fan of star strike to start with because i just had the you know and it, it it's one of those recency biases for me where it's just like every time i play it this happens right. but i swear i could control two-thirds of that board and they just have a board edge and that is where all of the objectives would land <laughs> yeah and now with veins of Gur, and it's they're what was it? It's a, you roll a seven, it's dead metal. It's like two through six, lower. seven is dead yeah. metal, and then eight through yeah. twelve is is other side. Yeah. So I, yeah, they're, they're trying to address it so it doesn't seem as random, and there's only nine spots it could land. But I, I'm with you with it being neutral still. I just, yeah. Yeah, Feral 4A to me is actually one of the standouts. It might be my favorite scenario in the edition. Oh, why? Yeah. Honestly, because it's a six objective scenario. It forces you to spread out. Mm -hmm. um, unlike stupid power in numbers, you can only burn one objective <laughs> per turn. That um, is a good Which trait. actually that is makes you trait. really think about what you're burning and when and how, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Just the nature of Feral 4A, it's a really well-designed scenario, right? 22-inch yep. uh, No Man's Land in the middle... Uh, mm -hmm. like it, it, it's just, it's so solid in how it plays because it, you really have to like, think about your tactics. When are you pushing? When are you not? Uh, I love it. I think Feral 4 is to me the absolute standout. It's super fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. We talked about events after the show, Dan, you know, I told you, you know, a week or two after, after playing it, that it would be in my top five, just what it does to the game. And yeah, it, yeah it's, mm. it's the six objective done really well. I think that might be a nice change or fix to power numbers is to simply remove the ability to burn all the objectives and power numbers that that would help out that one a lot just mimic what we have with feral for ray in that regard yeah i, I wouldn't complain i uh that was my one law it was in, in the one day tournament i just played uh the power numbers was the game three it was actually a tempest eye versus my living city and mm. 
I got double turned horribly. I stopped the bridge, but you know what? It was we were so close. He could still run up his dwarves and then double and, turn and be before twenty blazing on the on the standstill in the next turn. Yeah, so he didn't care. And then sure. um, if I had won the priority, I'd just come in off the table edge, take his back three objectives very easily. You know, go about my business. And God, I think I I rolled a five. He rolled a six, and it's like okay, that's cool. We'll just play for battle tactics and stuff because they the way the scoring worked in the tournament. If you still scored all your extra stuff, you did good. And I got fifth out of twenty just from getting all my extra battle tag. I you know, and uh, I nicked him enough. He didn't win. He got second. Hmm. So yeah, you know, still nice. worked. Nice. Yeah. The vice I really like a lot. It's the longest dead zone in the middle at 24 inches yes. uh, mm. because it still has like the, the sort of old school old map deployment zone because mm -hmm. it can do that because mm -hmm. it's lengthwise. Um, it's easier to play lengthwise if you're still using the same size general table on a smaller board as it were. Yeah. Now. Like we had very generous space in between the tables, which was wonderful at NashCon. You could actually like be right. comfortable, set your army up yeah. somewhere, have some place to... Like, oh, you know, to like write and roll your like to, to have your your extra stuff off table, your yes. your measuring devices mm -hmm. and things. Um, yeah. Geez, I I like I just I, I know tos are always cramped for space, but man, I'd rather have twenty less people at the tournament if it meant we all had room to play comfortably. So, I yeah. guess COVID silver lining. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I hear you. I hear so, you. but the problem, my only problem with the vice is if you have a, a sort of unkillable character, if you you're sort of archeons and go treks and things mm. like that mm. they are they basically say i get all the points for turn four and five <laughs> yes <laughs> because mm. i'll go yes. sit here in the middle and you can't come touch me because oh. if you come near me i'm going to obliterate you right mm. like i will just yeah. build up my whole army around whatever i've got left will buff the monster character and sit around them and uh if you come near me you die right yeah. Um, so, like, it's it's interesting in how it moves and how it forces you to spread. It definitely mm. rewards movements in, you know, like, movement capability, mobility, I guess is what I would say, in rounds yeah. one through three. Yeah, but yeah. in round four or five, it rewards just like, hey, I need to sit still and kill anything that comes near me. So you have to kind of think about that in advance, right? And, like, can I run up the score in some way in those uh, earlier rounds? Mm. That's that's what I had done, by the way, because he had it, that Cities player with the 420 Blazer that I was talking about that I was against – also had mm -hmm. Gotrek in their list with all the Iron Greaks, right? <laughs> so I was like, well, he's going to mm. own the Vice point in turn four and five. So I was yeah. like, I went to great distances to take his point away mm -hmm. in two turns or whatever. So okay. that, that way I could have, I could get the score one, score two, score more. Yeah. Right. Um, mm. So, uh, whereas I knew my points were still well protected and he couldn't get at them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, and that kind of stuff. And you had fly high on your boats, right? To play that yes. that teleporting reposition game too. Well, which, there's which is... that. Yes, there's the fly high on the boats. There's you know like super yeah, you fast brought the right tools. gyrocopters and and outriders mm -hmm. and stuff like that who can you know go real far and fast. <laughs> Anyways, oh yeah. The only negative I've heard on this one is when you get matchups that you have say two melee armies sure. that are kind of similar and uh... they're standing and looking at each other. Right. Yeah, and I they're... can see that. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard some of those instances, but in general, you know, I, I, more often than not, you're going to get matchups that have enough uh, rock, paper or, you know, rock, paper, scissors to them. you got a shooting army, therefore the melee army needs to go after them as opposed to just staying, staying around and getting shot. Or, okay. you yeah. know, you've got like I played Iron Jaws versus Suns and I didn't want to wait until round four to try to compete against Suns in the middle yeah. of the board. So that meant I need to get my DPS check passed by round three. So I went right. in hard. You know, mm -hmm. uh, started going in round two and then went in really hard round three and, and just, yeah. So it's kind of, I'm seeing more things like that. I, I was worried about this one, but yeah, there mm -hmm. seems to be enough nuance and yeah, like for the most part, pretty, pretty intriguing. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, we already talked a little marking territory and its downsides. Power struggle. It needs the FAQ. Uh, yeah. On the neutral side, Vainziger and Tectonic Interference. Again, there's sort of three on the horizontal in the middle. That already is a problematic setup. And yeah. as well, then they also have this random element where it's just like, oh, you accidentally lost the game. You know, you played smart, you yep. tried to cover your spaces, but you can't cover the whole board. I mean, it's just the nature of this mm. world, right? Like, that's, you just, if you're, yeah. if you can cover the whole board easily, you probably already won the game, right? It's very mm. rare that you can just, like, spread out mm. and cover everything uncontested. And mm -hmm. you can just be like, oh, I played really well, but then uh, this die rolled and it was like, oops, oops, all berries, <laughs> I lost the game. You know, like, I, yeah. Okay. You know, there yeah. was, that was nothing really you could control. I, I controlled as much of the board as I theoretically could without instant losing, and then I lost. And, 
That's right on that table edge, man. There it is. I controlled two thirds of it. Every tournament, that style of game comes in, and I'm just like, nope, can't do it. Yeah, but uh, yeah. And then yeah. uh, power yeah. numbers again. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, Tyler. I was just gonna say, yeah, I'm veins. Like, I I get it, and I, I was talking with Vince about this earlier that I definitely have a mm. uh, bias against castle armies, uh, which is kind sure. of ironic because I mean, like Daughters of Cain is a very castly type army for, sure. for the most part. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I sure. I like that it does push castle armies. Sure. Although mm -hmm. there there are other missions that push castle armies, which is good. Uh, I do, mm -hmm. I certainly find veins uh, more intriguing than tectonic interference. Because tectonic is simply the three in the middle, which does generally reward, you know, fire slayers or, you know, Nurgle, you know, name your pick, hanging out in the middle, putting bodies, alpha blocking, alpha bunkering. But yeah. I, I don't know. I, I still think I would still probably put veins like low goods. Like it wouldn't be among my first five mm -hmm. choices, but would happily see it in a pack, especially if it's within that category of consideration with, say, the uh, power numbers and feral, feral foray. Mm -hmm. as the the missions that have the six objectives so yeah, those, sure. those are spreading you out as well i kind of see it playing yeah. that role and i mean look i you know i played obr uh he would have been in a tough spot if the objective had landed on the far right but he mm -hmm. had enough in that army to where he could have contested it it's just that he was waiting uh he he, he wasn't equitably distributed with his okay. power okay. so he could he had some choices that he could have made to, to do that a little bit more Sure. Sure. Anyway, yeah. Yep. Uh, survival yeah. the fittest. I don't have many thoughts on. It's just it's fine. It's mm. fine. Yeah. It's it's like yeah. super neutral. I don't I don't particularly love it. I don't particularly hate it. It's like the most neutral of the neutral ones for me. I, mm -hmm. I don't I don't have much to say on it. I mean Tyler, any thoughts on it? I I literally mine is like it's fine. You know, actually, I haven't even played this one. Have you guys played it? Rocket, yeah. did you get any games in with this one? Uh, I did once early on, and it was yeah. so memorable, I couldn't even tell you what happened. Yeah, I just <laughs> I, was, I don't like we the got like vanilla predators here. and prey chosen thing, and it's like it's such a yeah. silly mechanic. And it, it, oh, that one! Yeah, yeah you yeah. score the bonus for killing the yeah. Yeah, it just it, to me it screams like it's a narrative game. Right, I, it, I don't it doesn't it though. It like if this was a yeah. narrative scenario, I'd be like, yeah, this is perfect. This is what I want to be doing. It just I yeah. don't know. It feels too goofy, too clever, whatever you want to say by half. Yes. Right? Yes, like if this was like they did like a like a Lethis campaign book like with a, but in Gur, we're in Thondia or whatever, however you yeah, pronounce yeah, it, these sure, fantasy sure, names. Sure, you know, sure. we're hunting down every um, every orc because um, Kragnos is coming down to kill my my beloved dragons and drakes and dracoffs and dracolions. How dare he? Those cats were great. Uh, I would love it in a book with that as a little campaign pack thing. Uh, power and numbers, I grow to hate more and more every day. Uh, every time I play it, I hate it a little more. Um, mm -hmm. I just find it to be mm -hmm. a super problematic scenario. Like, yeah. and it's not just because it was my round five where I lost by one point. It's because, like, it's because of the fundamental misalignment that happens where some armies have really tremendously good battle line that they want to yeah. take in mass numbers that are nearly impossible to shift. Yes. And it's like, okay, well, as long as those are alive, you can't take the point. That's nope. it, right? Like, you're not going to overwhelm mm -hmm. them. Now, some armies can still come in and do really well there. You know, hey, a Taker tribe is going to love marching in with their battle line 30 counting Mega Guard. Dude. <laughs> Isn't that a great yeah. day for them, you know? Yeah. Uh, but Because they can just walk up, take it from you, burn it. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's my other problem with power and numbers is that you can just burn any number of objectives you want. There's no yeah. actual reason. Like if you, the way the points work out, if you hold it into turn three, unless you're positive, you're going to hold it to turn five, you should just burn mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Because it's one, two, four, nothing, eight. Mm -hmm. Right. Is how yeah. the right. math works. Right. And so it's like, it, it, it leads to these really weird math jumps in your scoring where you like, you think you're in a good place, but you miscounted. And then all of a sudden they burn one. Wait, you burned yours for, well, hold on. If I burn mine, then, but if I, I'll get two, but wait till next turn I get four. But then if they hold this, then they could get mm -hmm. four. But if I can't move this, then they could burn for eight. And it's just like, uh, oh, yeah. and then your brain explodes, mm. right? And then battle tactics come into play too. Because right. if you burn all of them too early, you're like, wait, and then I, then I drop a couple battle tactics. Oh, I yeah. didn't do my grand strategy. Wait, did they just win without ever getting to hold a point to burn? Yeah, so it's just, 
it's a weird scenario with just that just leads to yes. weird math and i hate it more and more every time i play it because of the mm -hmm. sort of delta of some armies you know like some armies you can play it and you're like hey i'm loving this all day and all night right it just this is so yeah. this is so easy mm -hmm. and uh and then some of them you're just you feel like you're you're nailed to the wall from minute one yes right? yes um, and that's not because of necessarily the way you built your list. It's just you don't have the, the tools don't exist in your army to make that choice. No. Right. So, Rocco, I have thoughts on this one, but why don't you go? What, what do you think about power numbers overall? Well, you know, like I was saying, it actually the last time I played it, it really was they, they took all the objectives, burned them early and then couldn't score battle tactics. So I almost won in the end mm. uh, that that actually happened. It was hysterical. Mm. Uh, but it. <sighs> Again, it's it's a haves and have nots. It's it's something where if it's in a pack known beforehand, it can affect list building. Yep. Where but you know, like I'm city, so I'm like, okay. And I I, I do have a Frost Phoenix and 20 Phoenix card. I I love this normally. Mm. Um and also someone who can teleport 30 Iron Drakes that can shoot all my <laughs> Phoenix card. Yeah. I can't roll enough four ups in the world, man. Mm. Um and it you know, it's it's one of those things where elite armies are going to struggle. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you're Gargants and you count as thirty models, because then it then it doesn't matter. Okay, you know, you so, and battle line. Yeah, yeah. So Rocco, if you're let's say you're going to Adepticon, which normally mm -hmm. never releases the missions in advance, and you know that power mm -hmm. numbers may be a possibility, is that changing your list? Is that changing how many battle line units or the amount of battle line you're putting in your list? So, for a lot of people. Uh, the, you know, usually you just take the three and you go on. But for, for me, I've since the last GHB came out that put emphasis on battle line, I always try to put an extra unit of battle line anyway, just to have four. Mm -hmm. Where if it is something like a, like this power numbers would come up, even as a thought, I would be like, okay, cool. I've got one unit of like, say like a fast cavalry thing. If it's deep, you know, I'm bringing eels. If it's cities... You know, I I would love the Outriders and Tempest Eye, mm. and it's something that I could threaten just by my presence being there. You know, it's the, it's the Stormcast thing from before, where it's like, oh, the Griffhound is now just an area of denial bubble. Just the threat of that being there, yeah, like that threat. If I have the fourth battle line, I can move up and aggress if I need to. You have to deal with that. Is why I I and I've just kept that mindset the whole time. Yeah. So personally, I I'm sneaking an extra battle line in if I can. Mm -hmm. um, even with my my living city, because again, I could pop out from the sides, you know, when the tree starts speaking tree and all of a sudden you got, <laughs> sure. well, now with um, the coalition rules, I can't do it with dryads mm. or a tree. Uh, maybe I can do it with, it won't count for my battle line, but it is a battle line. There, see, there's an FAQ question. Yeah. Right now. Uh, yeah. So, you know, line. yeah. Mm. Yeah. So in that case, yeah. You know, I'm still if it if it's a possibility, if I know the the tournament organizing, like yeah, man, screw power and numbers. Mm. I'm not telling anybody, but you know, it's like yeah, we're not doing it. I'm like okay, I won't think about it. But because it's in that ecosystem, I still gotta look at it. Yeah, I, I have a simple answer for you, Tyler. Mm. Sure, mm. if I thought I could get away with switching something without losing any potency of my list, in which case I'm a have because I have great battle line I could have taken anyways. Mm. Right. Like, so sure. Yep. If I happen to be playing in an army where I can choose different units that happen to be battle line and not diminish my list. Right. Mm. Like if I'm in yeah. daughters or something where I've just got all the good choices in the world and most of them, I can make battle line in my army mm. right? in the ways I would want. Sure. Yep. Maybe I get rid of five life takers or something and end up with an extra unit of, of, or, or you know, an extra unit yeah. of, of snakes of some kind. Or, or sure. witches or whatever, right? As different kinds of mm. chaff. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Did, did, did that materially change? Like, did I bring a more balanced list because of that? Mm. No. Mm. Right? Which is where you're driving with this, right? But but the answer is I'm not going to materially change my list if just, mm -hmm. like, I'm not taking bad units. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay? Yeah. Just because I need to, more things that say the word battle line on them. Because mm. then overall, I'm not I'm not gonna cut off my nose to spite my face, right? Yeah. I got four other games. I'll make do. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, um, like <laughs> like I said, I played with three by five outriders on this. You know, I did that. I chaffed with everything except the battle line. Yeah, right. They became right. the most sacred thing, and they sat at mm -hmm. the back. 
I had yep. heroes and gyrocopters and crap up front that I didn't care about losing. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so, like, it made me play different, but it didn't make me list build any different because I didn't have any mm. other good choices. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be curious to go through a breakdown of all the different factions and look at this in detail in terms of the have have nots argument. I mean, it's compelling okay. on the surface that argument in relation to this mission. Uh, neutral is the perfect spot for me on this because I generally don't know where I stand on it. I see decent arguments on both sides. Mm. Uh, I, I like that it can impact list building in terms of having more battle line be required, all else equal. But again, I haven't like looked in depth at that to see whether that is a meaningful net positive. Are we actually doing anything really meaningful with that that argument, <laughs> with that notion, Vince is saying we're not. He might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I def not too keen on the notion that you can burn all of the objectives, but again, haven't really sat down and thought about that in the context of battle line. Maybe it's needed in relation mm. to the battle line requirement as the only ones that can score, uh, where that's actually playing a meaningful role, being able to burn all at once potentially with some list to better compete on this one. I, yeah, there's there's a lot going on with it. Not really sure how I feel. Played it at uh, Flying Monkey, uh, made a couple of mistakes, and mm -hmm. you know, might have I would have had that game actually if I'd made a couple of better mis uh, decisions. But sure. yeah, I can I can definitely see some of the downsides of this mission. Yeah. Yeah, and then my bad list is just Apex Predators and Tooth and Nail. Apex Predators should never be in any pack right now. It rewards all the things that are already the most powerful things in the meta. Mm -hmm. It's like Megas, Marathi, and Archeon, and Gotrek, and all of this stuff that, yeah. you know, you don't want, like, uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a Doc, a, a Marathi, and the Bow Snakes list featuring mm -hmm. Gotrek is just like dreaming <laughs> of a pack that has Apex Predators in it, yeah. right? Because yeah. they just get to auto-win that mm -hmm. game. It's like, I'll hold all three points. Mm -hmm. I don't even care. No, uh, and uh, for the folks at home too, could we? Uh, since it's only the two, uh, yeah, sure. Could so we Apex go over the... is the one where well, like Thank leaders you. basically are the ones that can take it, right? So, um, and and leaders and only leaders. So hence your, uh, you know, your monster heroes that were already quite mm -hmm. powerful in the addition become the only potential scoring units as well, basically, right? Yeah. So it's the just extra healing. And... Yeah, it it just it's bad. It's a bad. It's a bad scenario because if you're not playing with, if you don't have one of the already potent god characters, the god characters just get to really bully you. So mm -hmm. it's just an, it's just a more or less an instant win for them unless they're facing their equal, right? Yeah. yeah. It exacerbates like, uh, you know, it, it exacerbates everything. It's already bad. Tooth and nail. I hate it just like I've hated every previous version of this thing <laughs> sure. because I don't like the idea of scenarios just completely invalidating allegiance abilities. Uh, yeah. Tell right? me why you're mad. Uh, Preach. <laughs> like, yeah. you don't want your summoned units to charge or shoot after? What do you mean, Vince? Well, yeah. So this one is it's basically the old uh, total commitment where you couldn't, you know, yes. where you, you can't, you can't Ooh. deploy anything in reserve. Mm -hmm. So it gets rid of all that. And then in addition, your summoned units can't shoot or charge in the round they show up. They all have summoning sickness. Now we could yep. talk about whether or not a rule kind of like that might be a good idea for the game overall. Like there might be ways to integrate that kind of a concept of summoning sure. sickness into the game overall in a healthy way. But just mm -hmm. having it randomly occur in a scenario is so egregiously <laughs> punishing those two rules to like yeah. half the armies there. And by the way, it's not like just the powerful armies that get punished by this, right? No. Like, Never. again, it's just completely, it's this giant Godzilla just stomping around. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure, it's punishing to, I suppose, like, heavy summoning armies, I guess. Like, sure, mm -hmm. Slanesh, like, because that's a real powerhouse right now. <laughs> um, hey, gets hey, hey they worse. had two foreign ones. Hold on now. Thank you for reminding him. Good, good work, buddy. <laughs> it, uh, that's two, but then, still. Sure. Uh, it, that's fine. Um... But the, you know, like, yeah. but it's also hitting, like, particular Beasts of Chaos lists that want to ambush. Or, uh, what else? Um, My uh, random, the fourth oh, best city like in that Night book, Haunt Living lists. Cities. Night, yeah, Nighthaunt, Legion of Night. Sylvanath. Cities. Sylvanath. Or Nighthaunt. Like, they didn't you know, I it. mean, the it's just like, it's just mm. insanity to me that we still are publishing this scenario and that anybody uses it. I do not understand they made it worse. They were like, oh, you didn't like the restriction that ruined allegiance abilities before? I'm going to ruin more of them. I just don't. They doubled down. 
it was uh it was a shocking choice to me so yeah tooth and nail is just it's that's a big yeah. it's a big thumbs down for me there boss <laughs> big agreement big agreement huge let's, let's go back to apex predators let's try to make a case for oh, apex no. predators i refuse i, I mean right. that fix balls all in of your the court. bad models and it'd still be a problem fix all the ones that are really egregious go track mm -hmm. so Arch it'd still be a problem i think one of the issues with it is that the way that it's written as i understand it i have to look at it again but i think this is right is that let's take archeon archeon can take mm -hmm. a point Yep. dominate it yeah and then you could have a chaos lord sitting behind him who could then stay on that point correct still control it while archeon goes off and murders something somewhere else correct. whereas previously mm -hmm. in place of arcane power his butt had to stay in the same place yes to continue yes. scoring i think that's that's one of the fundamental issues with it right now yep yeah sure sure yeah. absolutely yeah there's that and then the save stacking. Like, like when you look at the, mm. the, the scenario itself has fundamental problems, as you've described, but the game mm. itself has underlying fundamental issues that are also making this worse, which is mm. save stacking, right? Yes. Monster heroes are the easiest thing to save stack in the game. Yes. Right? And, and you were doing it anyway. You right? wanted to. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you, like, <laughs> the fact that you got to kill them to remove them just says, good luck, you mm -hmm. know? Here's a, here's a simple example. In that game five with that I played, my opponent mm -hmm. had six Varengard with demon weapons. Like, this is a very, very scary unit, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he picked Slay the Warlord because he knew he could get into range. I mean, they had Grasping Plate, and those things are ridiculous. So they can just shoot 22 inches around the board and whatever, whatever. Mm. Yeah. But... And it, or, or farther, because he also had the Cast Lord to make them sometimes double pile in if he could keep Ooh. it in range. So then, they, then they're going like 28 inches across the board or whatever nonsense. Grass, um, play, you're talking about the six inch activation? Six like inch piling. activation, yeah. Yeah, exactly. and then do it yes. twice. And then, yeah, yeah massive. So then they can do that twice. Cover the whole well. board. It's super Cover fun. the whole board. Super yep. fun. Um, so. I had to, I had to, I had to. I had to measure 22 inch bubbles around his unit with yeah. all my army like that. Yeah, um, did you hear? Did you hear that, Travis? Super fun. That's our local guy who runs that nonsense. Sure. All right. Just have to get that out. Um, but at any rate, like he yeah. brought his Varen guard. Now, because of the nature of the bases here, he could only fight he into my into my nomad prince, which was my general. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this is a foot wanderer hero, yep. fighting with like five wounds. Right now he had the he had his mm -hmm. aether forts or not his aether forts forts. Sorry, his um. Amulet of Destiny, of course. Okay. Right? Oh, good, good, good. Yep. And there's a five wound guy, right? Mm. Okay. Did he have an entourage with him too? Nope. To... His 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 entourage had had to have been they they were killed a little while back by the oh, no. by the rampaging Baron Guard, so he had no bodyguard unit anymore. It was oh, the only no. battle line unit I completely lost, but I lost one. Oh man, that's so sad. They should like and subscribe to this video and this channel <laughs> right now so you hear this story. He picked Slay on, the Warlord. Vince. Oh, okay. slaying the Lord. Okay, okay. You set the scene beautifully. What happened? He piles into my Nomad Prince with four Varengar, because that's the most he can get around them and maintain coherency, right? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think you've got the stuff to take out my Nomad Prince. And he's like, this is this is six Varengar. These are, these are incredibly frightening units. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's see what happens. Yeah. He did three wounds. Failed the battle. Get out of here. Did you best day ever? I mean, yeah, I had like I had plus two to save, right? That's a oh. nomad prince, and the Varengard couldn't lift me, right? And so, like, that's my point. If I can, that that dude's like a hundred points, and he was very easy to keep alive. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, like, the uh, the, the like, that's my point. Look how mm. far down I went. All right. And yeah. he's, and the hero yeah. still couldn't be lifted. Hmm. All right. And I went way down. Like that is way down there as far as power mm -hmm. level goes. No one's like <laughs> yep. the nomad prince. There's the game breaker. You know? No. Nope. Mm. Not not okay. one not Alarial either. They she ain't letting none of those wanderers back in. <laughs> so yes, exactly. So my point is it's just a that's that's why it's bad. Get rid of the save yeah. stacking, up the points mm. on the worst ones. Fix the way the scenario works. Like, there's so much you have to unwind. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. yeah, thank you, Bryce. Yeah, Suns definitely do screw with Apex Predators as well. That's that's high on the list. Yes, yeah, so mm. I don't even want to think about that. So, anyways, that's mission. <laughs> oh. All right, let's keep moving. Beautiful. All right, grand strategies and battle tactics. Well, we're not going to take as much time as we did on that one, but that one was pretty yeah. busy. Yeah, there's a lot yeah, to discuss fair. there. All right, that's fair. So, grand strategies and battle tactics. What I've got down is that on grand strats, our initial take stands. Some of these will never be chosen. Some of these are near auto completes. You just mm -hmm. select the one that most easily t matches your army, and you should, in most cases, get three points. Yep. Uh, they they become kind of a nothing burger almost. Unless you happen to be in one weird army where you just have none that you feel like you can reasonably do. I don't know that there are many of armies like that out there, but it, occur it occurs. No. Uh, Tyler, you mentioned the rotational option. So you want to talk yeah. about this? Because this is how your tournament this weekend went. Yeah, oh. so Jeff Nauman, uh, one of my favorite TOs, awesome guy. I've been running Siege World, now Gateway Open, for a number of years. Jeff and played a lot of practice games with 3.0, the local community in St. Louis. You know, talked with us down in Springfield. And... Our general experience had been, like a lot of us, that for the most part, we're getting the grand strategies every single game. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had, maybe I could count on enough, uh, one hand the number of games that I've had that were impacted by whether somebody got grand strategy or not. And so he made the decision to only allow you to play one grand strategy once across your five games. So how, okay. many, do we, how many we got? Like eight or nine of them? Yeah, there are yeah. eight total, yeah. Eight total, yeah. yeah. So pick pick five out of the eight. It I told Vince before the show it felt very much like Nashcon schemes. Sure. In that you know you get your mm -hmm. kind of you pick your 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 kind of have a five, maybe five in mind out of your eight that you could go after, and then you're trying to sequencing them well. Like round right. one I played Stormcast, and he had three you know five six one heroes. I'm like, all right, this mm -hmm. might be my best shot at killing all of the heroes, which right. is generally sure. a pretty pretty tough battle tech or tough grand strat. It so, is, yeah. Yeah, I, I loved it. I heard really good feedback over the weekend from that approach. I mean, it, you know, there's maybe a little have have nots. Maybe mm -hmm. Suns might be a, a healthy challenge for them, uh, having that change. Okay. But, but, but generally, yeah, I heard a lot of good, good feedback from that approach. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I think the rotational option is really interesting. I'd love to see some more tournaments explore that, where where you have to switch grand strats every game. And you can't yeah. duplicate over the course of the tournament. I think that's okay. really interesting where it could make it more a, a bigger differential. Um, assistant ref said, I know I sound like a broken record, but grand strategies add nothing to the game and actively hurt it by promoting skew and tabling. These are just broken. There's no reason for them to exist. Yeah, I mean, like right now, they're just in most armies, they just end up being 15 free points. You don't have to work that hard for or 15. I'm sorry, three, three free points. Just please excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, you don't have to work that hard for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like I went five out of five on my grand strat, uh, you know, like yeah. I, I, a lot of people did. Um, mm. I was able to deny my opponent round five's grand strat because I killed, because he had the priest one and I killed all his priests. Okay. Right? I just shot them all down. Mm. Yeah. Um, so like that was a chance where I actually was able to deny it by just reaching out and killing all his shrines and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Right. Um, okay. So, there's I, I think the rotational option sounds the most interesting to me. I hope somebody explores that because it does make yeah. it feel like um, it it would really vary things. But I think, Tyler, if we went to the rotational option, we'd probably need maybe a different type of list. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sure yeah. it'd work for every army as they currently exist. I know. I wanted to pull it up here while we're talking about it. Yeah. I mean, are you doing the, the sense of... Yeah, I mean, you... keep all your battle line alive, kill the enemy general and yours lives, kill all the enemy heroes, mm -hmm. uh, keep all your monsters, keep one of your monsters alive. Uh, yeah, which is probably your general on keep a monster. All your, keep one of your wizards or one of your priests alive and then touch all yep. the terrain. Right? Be a yeah. terrain toucher. And wasn't there uh wasn't there have more units at the end of the game than your opponent? Oh, there yeah, is that is that in the basic or is that in the uh, dominating presence? I wanna say it's a GHB one. Okay. I might have named seven. Yeah, no, you're you're right, Rocco. There yeah. you go. Hey, okay. I there use it, it with my deep kin and I'm like, that's what I'm here for. Every once in a while. No, no you guys yeah. can do the seven out of eight. I'll be over here like, hey, I can contribute. <laughs> no, you it's got okay. it. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like we might need a slightly different rotation. Yeah. But but For, I like the idea. Conceptually, mm -hmm. it feels like the way these should have been used. Yes. Right. So even yes. if this isn't the right list, 
I think that's the right mechanic. Mm. Does that make sense? I don't know, man. I, yeah, I would lean I, to one thing. We may not be too far away from a sufficiently right list. Yeah, right my point there. is I just haven't thought deeply about it and how that would yeah. shake out. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. And, and you know, and for tournaments, I I like the idea. You know, a more robust list. I don't, you know, like you say, we haven't really thought deep about this. So I don't know what that would yeah. be like off the top of my head. But it, it would be healthy enough. And then it's yeah. it'd be the, the secondaries from the last GHB kind of where it's like, okay, yeah, score five yeah. throughout a tournament. You know, they're right. extra points. It gives you an opportunity to get points for denying them for your opponent to try to break up more type, you know, come up with more tie breakers mm. instead of maybe just the strength of schedule. Mm -hmm. um, like I've had games where well, my last tournament before COVID, uh, they had to go to like the third or fourth decimal point because of all the different tie breakers we had to go through. Um, so, you know, more stuff that could just straight up say, hey, yeah, he, he did this, she did that. That's the difference. I, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, I saved Hold the Line and Prize Sorcery, which were my two easiest for rounds four and five, because I thought those sure. were the yep. toughest games. Sure. And yeah, try to try to, which again, Nash Comp scheme style, you try to get your hardest out early. Yep. All mm -hmm. sequel. And it, yeah, it was a completely yep. different experience. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Makes sense. I think that's great. So, TOs who happen to watch this, take note. Maybe, maybe give that a shot and see how it works. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about battle tactics. Uh, here's my notes on battle tactics. Sequencing is mm. everything. Mm. Uh, understanding the nuance matters. What I mean by the yep. nuance is like objective location. Uh, so like where are the objectives actually at vis-a-vis -vis what you need mm. to be doing. Uh, monster bonuses, keeping those in mind. Territory restrictions, that kind of stuff. So like objective location, I'll give you a simple example. When you're doing aggressive expansion, if the if the mm. uh, if the point yeah. is on the border of the two territories, you can use aggressive expansion even if you claimed them from the top one. So you can just grab those right away. You dang right. right. Mm. And uh, so like that's an easy thing to miss, and you don't know it, and you go first, and you don't mm -hmm. do it, and then your opponent does, and you're like, oh wait, I could have done what? Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. And so it's like that kind of thing. When I say monster bonuses, I mean, keep in mind all the different things that can have a monster bonus. And if you have a list that can take advantage of them, trying to do it, because oftentimes mm -hmm. that one extra point can really matter. Oh, right? yeah. Uh, and then territory restrictions. Yeah, so this is for things like Savage Spearhead, where you have mm. to go wholly within your opponent's territory. Yep. You know, there's a, there's a lot of small deployment areas. First mm. Blood, very small uh, uh, yeah. territory. Um, like the the ones inches. that are 22 inch dead zones with only 11 inches of territory horizontally, oftentimes <laughs> that can all be easily zoned out from dropping. So it's like, unless you got mm. something that's really fast, that's going to just go run over there or you're going to pick it late in the game where you might have a yep. couple real mobile units that got their way over there. Once you've sort of cleaned some of their stuff out, mm. you know, it's easy to mess it up, not be able to move wholly into their territory, right? You can't have a, you can't have a dude tow it out. You got to mm -hmm. be wholly within, and that's that's a smallish yeah. amount of space. So, just like I think that battle tactics uh, are the one area that I know I want to work a lot more on, yeah. me mm -hmm. personally, um, because I know I didn't get the sequencing right in all my games. Like I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just it's such an it's such an area that you can mess up, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, yeah. The um, Gumber says, always remember that Monsters Takeover doesn't get the monster bonus. I've had several opponents think it could to get the extra point. That's absolutely correct. It does not because they just yeah. be. And, and and I get it. I had somebody actually do that to me during the tournament. And I was like, I had to look and I went, I was like, OK. And I went and read it. I had to go look and I was like, because I had my cheat sheet with me, like always. I have my cheat sheet. Oh, sure. It has the, all the mm. battle tactics completely printed out directly from the book. Yep. And I said, that's not you don't get the bonus for that. But I know why they thought that. They weren't trying to cheat. <laughs> no, they yeah. were scanning the list for look and looking for the monster word in bold. Oh, of course. Because that's generally where you know you get the bonus. And that yeah. one has the monster word in bold, but that's because that's what you need to do it. Yes. Right? right. Mm. Yep. So yep, just, yep. yeah, those little things like that, those little nuances, mm. right? It was interesting, again, mm. because I didn't play with any monsters. 
Mm. Okay. I, I had no monsters in my list. I did have casters. I never turned anyone into a monster. Never felt the mm. need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it, it would have never been beneficial to do so. Yeah, yeah. It's great in theory, but I just, I just worry, you know, that if I don't get the turn, and then my dude's still a monster, all of a sudden I'm giving up monster points, and then that, yeah. that I, I went for that little extra bit, and I got too greedy. <laughs> yeah, it's funny too because I had games. Again, just I, I keep referencing it because it's sort of top of mind. I had no monsters in round five. My opponent had no monsters. Mm. Mm. Right? So suddenly neither of us could do bring it down and neither of us yep. could do monsters takeover. Yep. Right? That list starts shrinking. You're like, man, I got to find a way to kill the warlord. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right? How are we killing a catacross? So it was like, uh, you know, mm. it, it was, it's, I will say it didn't bother me at all not to have any monsters. Not even sure. once. Not once hmm. did it ever matter or be an issue, mm -hmm. right? Like, didn't I? Yeah, didn't. Yeah. So I think you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, you have to have monsters, or you can't play. You, know, you got to pay to play." Sort of with monsters, I definitely yeah. don't think that's the case. My experience this weekend and in all my practice with this list, a list, a big mm -hmm. list where I had zero monsters whatsoever, it never felt like it hurt me, and I knew I never had extra victory points on the line that I was handing to them. Yep. Yeah. Right. Do you think, Vince, that was skewed meaningfully by the fact that you have a pretty strong power projection, you know, range damage list? As 100%. Opposed to like more, a more pure melee. Maybe? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. It, like that, that was, that, that, that helps to counter that, right? Like that, ar mm -hmm. my army was, was all power projection, high yes. mobility, high power projection, right? Like I could just apply pressure wherever I wanted in any turn. Yeah. So like, certainly that helped me keep the pace. You know, mm. I don't know. I'm not sure if I would feel the same if I was playing like all foot corn or something, you mm -hmm. know, non Archeon all foot corn. I, I don't know. Sure. You know, that's not a list I play, so I can't I can't speak to it. But I'll uh. say it's never hurt me to not have monsters. Like in all the practice games and all the games in the tournament, it never hurt me not having monsters. Not mm. once. Nice. So, Rocco, any thoughts on battle tactics? You know, obviously, I mean, maybe your experience in terms of, you know, denying, of course, is going to be huge. Uh, like that's the same. Yeah, it's, I think an area that I'm going to try to get better at as well. But yeah, no, it's it's definitely it's a game of denying. It's knowing like if I'm bringing just one monster, I'm doing that one where I'm just contesting with my monster. And I'm just trying to because once you start running out of easy to score. Yeah. Uh, Battle tactics, you know, like Vince said, if the other person and you, you both didn't bring monsters, two of them are off the table immediately. And then I'm like, all right, I'm just, I'm just scrambling. Like, mm -hmm. how do I late game kill their general? How do I set up an easy kill on a battle line unit that I call my shot and have to do this with? Yeah. And with with safe stacking, you know, we already had the anecdote here of the freaking Nomad Prince mm -hmm. <laughs> taking on uh, four out of the six Varengard and 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 living. Mm -hmm. It just the most amazing moment of you know you play that in your head. It's just he stands alone. I can check. I have to say that because of the rerolling <laughs> ones. So he just stands alone, right? Mm -hmm. And you just you have this awesome image of this narrative of the duel going at them against six of Archeod's cho chosen. And in, in in practice, you know he. How do you? how do you do that then mm. when you don't have the monsters and you have to start planning these ways and like, okay, cool. He's got to go for the warlord. Now I'm just going to best day ever. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like yep. pay attention to the sequencing. Like for example, yep. I never call my heroic action until they call theirs yeah. because right. Like they finish all their start of turn stuff. And then mm -hmm. I do all my start of turn stuff, which means right. I'm going to let them pick their battle tactic. And the second they pick slay the warlord, and pick their whatever their heroic action is. I'm like, great, yeah. best day ever on my general. Like, let's, like, <laughs> yeah. your general should not be in best day ever until they pick Slay the Warlord. Right. Right. No. Like, it's it's just that kind of little sequencing stuff yeah. that can make a Which big is legal deal and it. fine, too. It's not even yeah, gamey. Yeah, no, it's, it's just, yeah, you wait. It's I actually have to wait the correct way to play, but a yeah, lot of times fine. we get loosey goosey and yeah. you'd be like, oh, I'll just, like, okay, start a turn. I'll just heal my hero. Okay, go. Mm -hmm. Cool. Or whatever. I'll roll for the command point, you know? Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, I found Slay the Warlord and Bring It Down on a similar principle the most challenging just to, yeah. because they're just going to find us an hour. Yep. And, yep. you know, and then if you yep. don't get Roar, they're going to all out defense. Or mm -hmm. if you don't have the option to Roar, they're going to all out defense, yada, yada, yada. Or yep. they're, they're in, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite challenging. Yep. Uh, 
That is, unless yeah. they have a non-hero monster, in which case, then bring it down. Sure. So they becomes a whole different ball game. All right. <laughs> Hello, I'll, Cal the Charybdis. How I'll are you tell, doing, friend? I'll tell a very quick but funny story from oh, sure, sure, about sure. battle. This is about battle tactics from my game four against the Maws of Jork. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it was the we were playing uh, first blood. That was round four. So mm-hmm. we're very very far apart. Yeah. And uh, I give. Uh, he's he has the priority. He gives me the first turn. So we were both okay. the same number of drops, and he won the he won the roll off. Sure. So there's like many many inches between us because Maws a Jork with the he had the little boss bonus. They're rolling like they're re, they're three d six plus three movement plus a mm-hmm. reroll, right? So those mm-hmm. little squiggies can really get out there. And I'm you know oh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna walk into Mangler squigs because he had two loon bosses on Mangler, one of which was his general who had the five of board save. Okay. Yeesh. And so I moved to take my two points, one being well outside of his range to cover me, even on his best day ever, right? Like I was, I've stayed 33 inches away to hold the one point in the mm-hmm. bottom left. I mm-hmm. moved a single gyrocopter to hold the bot- the top right at like a yep. max distance, knowing he could get to me, but I don't care. It's one gyrocopter. Yep. And then I moved the steam tank up and, tur- and turned it sideways in between terrain. So it blocked everything up. Now I knew he could fly over the top of me, but at the distance I set it at, he would have had to have like literally the greatest role in history because I kind of set it mm. right there to where there was no way he was going to be able to charge over the top of the base. Sure. And I just prepped to go into best day ever. Went right, like mm. he'll be ready to absorb all the impact, and I know the steam tank commander can take it because he's hard. The only thing that brought that dude down was Gotrek because mm. yeah. Gotrek kills everything. Go- anyway, yes. So he yes. moves up. Stuff happens. Blah blah blah. Whatever it doesn't matter. It goes back to my turn. So I so mm-hmm. it, priority order maintains into turn two. So I have the top two. I say, okay, slay the warlord. Now this is a worse, this is a bad choice, theoretically. But his his loon boss on Mangler is like he jumped up to he was he was hoping to get the double, he didn't get the double. So he's kind of in range of all of my guns. Mm. Sure. Okay. I had killed his other loon boss on Mangler, the one that wasn't the general in round one. Yeah. Just by yeah. putting all the thirty inch range shots I had into it. Okay. Are they uh, four at base save or five? A four up base save, twelve wounds. So he was four up, five up, right? And a five up ward, right? So. Uh, well, he had, he cool. had the ambient of destiny, so yeah, he was a five okay. up ward. Mm-hmm. Good, okay, good. So I'm like, slay the warlord, because I knew I needed to kill that guy anyways, right? Like he mm-hmm. was my, he was he was the number one thing I wanted to kill that round. Yeah. So I was like, I, I'm going to put all my guns into him anyways, so I might as well just kill him. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I I'm like, all right, I'm going to start with mortal wounds because he's only got a five up against that. So I I've got a couple damaging spells. Roll the first damaging spell, miscast, do three wounds to myself. Okay. <laughs> roll the second spell, roll a three, fail the spell. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. so neither damaging spell works. I'm like, no problem. Do all my movement. I'm like, let's go into shooting. I'm going to start with the Storm of Shemtech, another great chance of mortal wounds, right? Three rolls on a two up. Yeah, so do love it. mortal wounds each. I roll three ones. <laughs> okay. Doing well. Oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, so no mortal wounds. So I shoot yeah. the, the steam tank commander's like right there next to him. I had, mm. so like, I wasn't in combat, but I was close enough. I was like, I'm, I'm going to shoot the steam sure. tank commander into this guy. The machine gun's going to go into the, the little, you know, squig hoppers next to him. And mm. so the battle yeah. cannon, roll a one. Sniper rifle on top, roll a one. And at that <laughs> point, so this is like out of nine dice I've rolled against guy, this guy, or 11 dice, 10 of them have been ones. Yeah. Okay. And so I said, all right. I literally said this out loud. I was like, all right, that's it. I give up. I don't get my battle <laughs> tactic this round. I give up. <laughs> right? The universe does not want me to kill this guy. No. I hear you, universe. Like, I'm not yeah. going to throw any more good money after bad. You get to keep him this round. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm not shooting at him anymore. Yeah. So I turned all the rest of the guns into his units and blew away all his units. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And uh, and and like then, that, but that dude was still alive, and I was like, "That's fine. That's just what this is." Yeah, he gets to yep. live for now. And that yep. dude didn't. Wow. didn't die. He was like one of the last units to die. The universe did not want me to kill that loon boss on Mangler. <laughs> nice, um, nice. But anyways, I thought that was very funny. So like, my point yeah. is, it's important to get your battle tactics and to think about it, but also don't let them disrupt your whole battle strategy. That's why I told that story, right? What I sure. could have done was just yep. like kept pouring shots into him. Oh um, yeah. When clearly I had already wasted so much firepower. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I gotta stop. I'm gonna lose the game because if I don't bring this guy down, then I've literally accomplished nothing. Whereas if I yeah. just go into the basic units, I'll just start picking things up. Mm-hmm. Right. 
-hmm. So I just turned and killed the other hero in like 25 squigs. Yeah. Right. You yeah, know. and that still wins you the game later down right, the right. road. Yep. So anyways, uh, like, go for your tactics, but know when to hold them and know when to fold them. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, sure. Yes. That's that's the answer. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. There you go. All right, yeah. gentlemen. Next thing? Mm-hmm. Next thing. All right. That was a fun story. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody enjoyed that. That little squig. I think I think my favorite part was when you said you rolled nine dice and you got ten ones. I'm not sure the math. I rolled that. like eleven dice because it okay. was two spell casts. <laughs> yeah. Two spell casts. That's four, three, okay. seven. No, it was nine. So it was eight out of nine ones. There you go. That's okay. What it was. Okay. And one of those was a two because you said it was a three. That you yeah, rolled that's what total. I was like, one was a two. Yes. Out of the oh, nine man. dice, I had eight ones and one two. There you go. You hate to see. Yeah. It. Uh, all right, let's talk about mm -hmm. meta health uh, Ooh, versus okay, problem okay. units. Okay. So, we're seeing a wide swath of armies being competitive and landing in the top 10, right? Phoenicium mm -hmm. even went into that. Phoenicium gets went 4-1, and one, okay? Sure. You've got FEC up there in a couple different times. Obviously, you've got things like Giants, Zinch, Doc, all mm -hmm, the usual mm -hmm. suspects we would we would expect to see. Slanesh. We've seen two Slanesh four and ones. Well, yes, that yeah. may be three now, right? It might be three, actually. Yeah. yeah, I think it might be three, actually. Um, Crazy. Like, the uh, the point is that we're seeing actually a pretty wide swath of stuff showing mm. up up top. Definitely mm. more armies than were happening in 2.0, right? Oh, yeah. All day. Mm. Yep. Uh, yep. And even things we saw as previously poor performers mm. have been showing up in the top 10 yeah. or, or the 5-0 yeah. bracket, 4-1 bracket. Again, however you kind of want to construe it, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, if I don't see 120 skinks in a list again, mm. <laughs> my God, there was a tournament in 2.0 where I played pre-nerf Petrifex Elite and then double things of Sotek. And it was Yikes. the hardest 3 0 I ever got. I got third place. Uh, Adam Mumford ran the tournament. It was actually a TTS tournament. Mm. Uh, but my God. And then I saw that in real life, too. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we're just doing this now. So I'm yeah. when they were like, yeah, reinforced units, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm on board. I'm on board. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so my point is, is that at this, like, we're seeing this big swath of stuff. Yes. Now, at the same time, we also all know that there are problem units out there. I gave a simple list here. Archeon, Gotrek, and Marathi, they're the big three that we always mention. But you could pick other things. You yeah. could pick your nine storm friends, right? Mm -hmm. You you could pick, like, 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 there are other units we could point to and say are problematic, right? Yes. Okay. So my question is, how are both of these things true at the same time? Is it a factor of new edition, new rules, lots of people starting from zero, and so kind of the Wild West, and anything mm. can happen? Or is it just actually the way the game plays now is allows for a broader set of victory conditions by armies, and those kinds of problem units can't win games on their own as easily? What's the answer? Mm. Right? What do you think, think Rocco? So when it comes to the the problem units and the just everybody seemingly gets a shot at the champ here, um, I think as we lean more into endless spells, the the Gotrex and the Marathis and the Archeons who all of a sudden can't charge because of the shackles, and it stays up. Sure, they get an extra ways. There seems to be other ways to unbind. There's different ways that endless spells work to like double heal things. There's there's so much. There's so much to work through with all this. Mm. But I think when it comes down to it, there's just so much randomness in the meta and so many things are good that um, you're going to run into a list you'll never, never... You wouldn't plan for a Sylvaneth army. You mm. know, like like with my Deepkin, I'm like, yeah, I've got three sharks and the turtle. They're all going to be running harpoon, so I can try to chip three wounds off of a Marathi and, you know, get a go trick. I'm not game planning for Sylvaneth. Mm -hmm. I'm not game planning for uh, 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 the the revenant with the the eggs and the bugs coming out with the hedge. I'm not thinking about them. I'm worried about 
uh, Lumineth, and how am I going to deal with uh, 50 Sentinels? And again, it shoot them from distance and <laughs> have enough plus ones to hit to counteract the minus one. But then mm. while I'm looking at that, what would be like the top of the meta, and then all of a sudden, here's this thing coming at me and trucking me and dropping me to a lower table, and it's also taking out some of these dock players. They're, you know, they're cannibalizing each other. You know, mm. uh, you know the Archeon that gets to fight when it dies, all of a sudden two of them are, are in each other's swords, and you're just like, huh. <laughs> what, what do we do here? Because if everybody's bringing you know, th- these kinds of big meta units and they're cannibalizing each other, then this other person comes out of left field, one of the 10 lists that's unique, and no one thought about it. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're getting a great shot. And that's that's where I think this health is coming from as well. And also, there seems to be... Like, I know we're all talking about shooting meta, shooting meta, shooting metas, but I think there's enough tools now we're starting to slowly see as people have been expanding their armies and getting some of these newer rules like Sylvaneth with the trees going everywhere with nor, uh, ignoring line of sight, more ways to teleport, more ways to buff a dirt through so he's not a derp through to get mm. two extra attacks on his sword and to, yeah. to play this movement game. Safe so, stacking, behind, yeah. behind terrain rule where yeah. you might get a plus one save and if you're not wholly within cover, but you're yeah. behind terrain. Yeah, there's there's a lot more ways to mitigate all those people. Yep, and then it's just like, oh, what do I do about um, the spells that are like making Sentinels to be a mortal wounds on a five up? Well, maybe mm-hmm. that's where you burn your once per game auto unbind. A lot of armies seem to have these days, mm-hmm. whether it's Stormcast if it stays pending new book, uh, KO with the Navigator can get it. Um, I'm just gonna probably keep saying order stuff, but uh, mm-hmm. cause, like Technos has it now. You get so many pluses to unbind from like a Nagash or an Archon that seem to be again viable. Oh, yeah. Even in OBR, you know, they found a new home. They're not Soul Blight Grave Lords, but you know what? Soul Blight, with how their army works for bringing back units, you know, you, you almost don't even care that they killed your unit of 40 zombies <laughs> if you're Brendan, the Lord of Death, because you bring because you already killed three of their other units. You're getting yeah. plus three on a five up roll to bring stuff back. You, you pop out of a grave site because armies are running so elite if they're running these better shooting units and a Marathi and a Gotrek, you have board control. Hmm. And it's zombies that are bringing models back to their unit on a two up. You don't care. You're already back to 40 dudes when you killed all the bow snakes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> because I, I, I think I agree with a lot of what you just said there, Rocco. Like, to be fair, I said a lot. You did, but, but that's <laughs> what okay. Correct. The, the reality is, I think maybe the fundamental nature of some of these scenarios like we talked about mm-hmm. contributes to this because they do tend to prevent runaway scores. Yes. yes. Right. And so because of the nature of the current scoring, it's actually allowing a lot more people to compete in different ways mm. uh, because you tend to score like, let's just call it the average is five in the good yeah, scenarios. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Right. Score and one, score two score more battle tactic and you don't even have to be on half the board usually to do it right so you yeah. like you still need to engage if you want to if you want to push to the win you can't just sit there and do nothing and play with yourself but mm. you do have more ability to still be scoring while controlling less of the board or killing less of your opponent's stuff right yeah. eventually it's going to come to that but you don't need to alpha strike them down in fact often that's a pretty terrible idea i think yeah right um I mean, it depends there's there's certain things where it can certainly work in your favor Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean to me that's i think that's probably the fundamental answer right that plus there is more balance because of the defense against stuff like shooting that is a bright side of the of the save nature right um it's harder to necessarily push through stuff like that yeah um yeah maybe maybe real quickly vince i wanted to ask you what what was your like updated uh, current impressions on range damage let's say broadly defined uh shooting and magic after your experience at nashcon you know well like, i mean i ran an unusual the... army right sure because yeah. like i don't know that i saw any like a ko list is jealous of my shooting <laughs> that, yeah. that's true okay like i brought the Battlestar galactica to that fight you know like, <laughs> you really did <laughs> once when, when all my guns like everything in the army shot basically okay. right mm. Yep. So every unit could put shots in the air and, and oftentimes on egregious bonuses, mm. right? Like in my, mm-hmm. in, in the good games where I was able to sort of control and have the board control I wanted, a lot of yep. my army was on twos, re-rolling ones, twos. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. right? sounds right. That's a yep. lot yep. of shots to put in the air. And so, like, it's still powerful. Like, surprise, surprise, shooting, still good. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I built the list, this insane list, to really exploit that stuff, right? And to be able mm -hmm. to choose units in order and remove problems and it's it was it's all this big johnny conundrum like i was sort of out of my wheelhouse but it was it was interesting to be able to play it through between the mobility and then pushing power where i wanted it right i'll pick mm -hmm. a little off this guy i'll try to i'll shoot this hero i'll weaken this unit i'll kill this unit right and just sort yep. of like spice that around was usually how i ended up using it but it's still like having that very mobile very diffuse power base where i could either like group up and just unleash you know, mm -hmm. like broadside somebody or yeah. just go <laughs> and spread the whole army out all over the board and just start like shooting everywhere and everything proved mm -hmm. to be, you know, valuable to have that. I don't think there's many armies that can do that kind of thing. Nah. Right. Um, nah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's still powerful, but you know, at the same time, uh, you know, fighting the Marathi go track list, it was a mm. tough fight all the way through. And by the way, they had mm. like 15 bow snakes too. So it's not like they were without <laughs> shooting for goodness sakes, no. right? And double tapping bow snakes that do mortal wounds. Right. I mean, they're, you know, Marath yeah. is up in my guts round one. Like, let's not kid ourselves here, right? No, not at all. Um, <sighs> I mean, I, I knew she was going to be. I had properly, you know, I had properly chaffed to, to make sure that that was going to, to not be a mm. problem. But like I had yeah. to pick what was going to die to Marathi, you know? Yep. Yeah. Oh, by the by the way, Vince, uh, Rocco. So I my list had a little combo. I mean, it's not nothing that inventive, but it happened game one, and I was so excited to get Stormcast. So okay. Cogs, yeah, yeah, speeding up time, mm -hmm. mirror dance spell, buff up Marathi, Catechism, Mind Razor, Witch oh. Brew, Mystic Shield, mirror dance. Throwing dancer, up a little in my mouth. Hold on. Throwing right, yeah. little Marathi up the board, getting Cogs Good. further up the board. Good. Tagged a more Imperial people tag. need to put little Marathi in danger that <laughs> together they can only take three wounds. Throw her up there, <laughs> fight, dang it! But yeah, Tagged go on. Puritan piled around, got into some tin evocators, uh -huh. took out six or seven. Oh, it's beautiful. The Ooh. combo that I wanted all weekend, right there. Cox <laughs> right. and Doc folks and mirror dance. It's a beautiful thing, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. All right, rant over. No, that's fine. So, yeah, I mean, quick it's, question. It's so quick powerful. question. Did you Keltmar? For retreat and charge on Big Marathi too, or no, he was you just had had I was had Mar. No, I was boring. I know. Just smooth that brain out, baby. Just smooth it out. Yeah, hundred percent. It's oh, yeah. Hagar. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Oh, that Marathi <laughs> doc list I played, by the way, was Calibron too. So they were all. It was the oh, anti, it was the anti shooting list. He had brought an yeah. anti shooting list, so it was funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. So at any rate, um, the. Uh, you know, the, the nature of this, I think this is exactly correct. And here's what may, really excites me about this. Mm -hmm. If these problem units, which we could probably identify pretty easily. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like we could go through the game and pick out sort of the, the proudest nails. Pink horrors. Sure. That would be. How do they actually work? Yeah, that would be one. Um, I think that. If those get adjusted, we by the way, we don't have to like crush them. I don't want to see them unplayable. I want to be a hundred percent clear on this, right? Like Archeon yeah. should be a thousand points. I'm just gonna set that 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 down. I'm gonna plant that take flag. Him at a thousand. He's that a is... thousand points. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh you know, Gotrek should go up some, Marathi should go up some. But like if we fix these units, uh mm-hmm. I think the meta becomes a real wide open place. Right? Yeah. And Cruel Boy is saying you can't shoot me outside of 12 inches. Okay. Bringing mm. in the night fighting rules. You know, like, yeah. I really do think at that point the the meta becomes super wide open. Because mm. yes. you can't fix one of these things. Right now they're kind of holding each other in check. Like, Gotrek kind of holds Archeon in check. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, if those if they both get whacked together... Mm. I just think this meta opens up even wider, and we get really, literally the best meta we've ever had. Yeah. I just want to take a note to thank everybody this weekend who said Ar uh, Marathi is fine and that uh, Vincent Venturelli needs to settle down. I, I had uh, three different people this weekend made, made a oh. comment on that. 
Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Uh, making the great point that, you know, you can just kind of chip damage her down, get off the mm -hmm. board and by round two. Seems, I don't know. She seems pretty fair to me, but what do I know? Well, for Marathi, yeah, because it that's the thing. When you're playing the god monster, obviously, <laughs> you just can't roll the after save. You can't roll. Like, if I played Gotrek, the first, my first eight damage, I'd roll three ones. So even, heck, with eight, Vince's nine ones he rolled, it's possible. That, that sequence of events can happen. Yeah. Like there was a guy with a new croak. I think he took like two or three wounds and then rolled like the eighteen on the three dice, and croak was dead. From oh yeah, I think you know. one of Jack's one of Jack's games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it happens. It yeah, really I, does. I appreciate all of you people saying she's fine at six sixty. You're wrong. That's great. Um, it's cute when it's, it's the it's other a, person's morality. That's cute, when it's crazy. It's a super cute defense from all of you stands who play Doc. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she's not. Uh, that being said, she is the least of the three the three problems here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe if Marathi could take four wounds instead of three a turn. I don't know. No, no. Just, know. She just needs to go up a little bit of points. She should be at least mm -hmm. 700. It's pretty easy. Didn't yeah. Gotrek go down points, too? He went down almost 100 right? points. 100. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's that's the bigger problem here for me of <laughs> just what... Like, what, they I, thought everybody I, was going to bring shackles and make them not charge? Sure. Like, I, I understand you Marathi stands out there. I mm. get it. Look at all the support that I've got in this chat. I'm Man, sure. I love this you guys. Is... It's, it's wonderful. Like, Vince, the, I have them in you. order of problem on the screen this is right Tyler's now. Tyler's show but now. But she's still in there. <laughs> she's still in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, guys, mm -hmm. are there other units? So, you mentioned the, the pinks. Take your pick, you know, 10, 20. Are there I, other units slash hero units, monsters, whatever, that would fit within one of these tiers, let's say? Let's say yeah, Archaeology. Yeah, they should be one. fixed in some way. Yeah, yeah, that like are really problematic enough for talking heads like us to talk about them or, you know, yeah, to get to get hit a little bit. In the should mm -hmm. be fixed tier. How about that? Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Probably nine storm friends because it's a crap experience. I don't think they're mm -hmm. I don't think they're a five zero army, but it's a crap experience. It's just a unit. What are we saying? Is the nine storm? Oh, the storm fiends. Storm fiends. Yeah. yeah. Nine yeah, storm yeah, fiends. Yeah. 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 No, you're I, right. I think the it's not a friends. tournament yeah. winning list. It's just a bad. I think it's actually a bad choice. Yeah. But, but I still think it's like just something that shouldn't be done. Like that's that's it. That's what it comes down to. Like it yeah. just shouldn't exist as an opportunity, right? No. Um, the so that would be one. Um, pinks probably need like. Yeah, like I said before, pinks need it's, adjusted it's... to in some degree. Like they certainly they need FAQ so we actually understand how they work. That'd be a good start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yes, and I'll, I'll also put out there, um, not that they're a problem, but the Overwatch. I'm gonna keep saying Overwatch because we mm. mentioned 40k, but the Unleash Hell on the Sisters of the Watch and the Handgunners because. When I see that, I see that as like a three-part thing. But I'm also the city's player, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wish and pray that it's you know you don't spend the command point. It doesn't count as being issued, but they shot, so it's not like they could shoot again. Is how I interpreted yeah, that. Yeah, it's it's it, it comes down to how are we uh, interpreting used. Yes. You know, because yeah, technically they have used it, therefore there, mm -hmm. there's an argument that they can't. Yeah. That, right. that's, yeah. That's so I wouldn't want to shoot the same unit twice in Overwatch, but. Right. I would still like to have my ability where I can have all my handgunners and my sisters of the watch just just a wall of lead in magical sure. arrows. Right. Uh, in the tournament that I played them at, not only did I get the good the good rules on the the two objectives in the middle on that one thing, each counting as two, mm. uh, it was viewed it was viewed in uh, my favor for that. So what would happen is I'd pop stuff out of reserve with all my bonuses. Um, and because of the smaller table sizes and the range of where I was able to set up coming in from the table edges, uh, it was actually against Mega Gargants. I focus fired one Mega Gargant down, and then I got the next turn, then shot another one dead. Mm. Um, and I had a great time. But I can also see why that is is a uh, bull poo. Mm -hmm. Cheaping it. Yeah, I mean, beyond that, we'd get into arguments, right? Like it, it'd be yeah. like, what's the exact thing down from there? There's probably a couple others that are maybe low hanging fruit. But yes. but my point is you're gonna get into like not as clear cut territory, like you're yeah. gonna get into stuff like sentinels, you which know, is already like happening that. right you're, now. You're sentinels, zombies. Into... Yeah. Someone sure. said salamanders. Uh, they're they're 
Uh, Crow yeah. Salamanders the are already is... now capped at two. It's like it's not as it's not as egregious. They're still very no. scary. I think salamanders are actually the the sort of one of the lesser scary things in in Seraphon now. I mean, we'll yes. talk about them on the next slide in in certain ways. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, yeah, they have, like there's stuff. There's stuff. You sure. know, yeah. I, I, I don't. Um, know. And sorry, Rocco. I would probably put the turtle in there right now, man. Listen. All right. So now that... Shelly, baby girl here. She's gonna uh-huh. have to have a talk with your Marathi. What three eighty? What do you what Three, what cheap ridiculous this, price are you paying? She is gorgeous. Oh hey, I played this turtle before it got the Marathi rules. I ran the battalion, <laughs> the Achillean Corps that everyone hated just for the fun of it. That was the tournament I 3 0'd. Um oh, and that's... she's been in my list ever since. And now she's yeah. got good rules. She's got impact she's got good impact hits into one wound infantry. I give her the bigger aura too, so that uh, that's actually probably a thing too with that, because mm. that was never really uh expanded on because her rules say that it's a 12 inch or above the namarty right if something's holding yeah. within and the maltrips yeah add three inches to that and mm. you know you would think yeah, okay three plus 12 is 15 and then you got a rules lawyer going well actually it doesn't say it adds to it it's just making the, the save aura bigger nope we lost tyler oh he'll be see back. That's okay. I, I defended my turtle i defended yeah, my exactly. girl he, couldn't, he couldn't take this turtle defense he was like enough right. of that well, it's a two plus save, so obviously he wasn't killing me back with Marathi with with Neg one rend. Sure. Oh. Yeah. So my answer is, you know, there's there's probably more stuff that that I wonder if I oh, can yeah. add him back in. Oh no. Oh he, yeah. He can join back in. There we go. I wasn't right, sure if he could join back. back in on your own. Welcome back, Tyler. All right. Uh, so everyone's saying that your Marathi just couldn't kill my turtle, and obviously <laughs> Shelly's the the better girl. It's okay. She's the better waifu, I guess. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> all right they we could argue about, same, right? about which units need to be fixed all day and so uh, yeah. yeah too deep into that like it, it's just oh, it no, becomes it's, the yeah. things people hate i yes. do agree with one point that was made in the chat that mm-hmm. like uh that like a lot of the problems that come come out of safe stacking mm-hmm. right like yes. that's that's what it comes down to yeah. a lot of that is sort of the underlying rotten root at the core of this right mm-hmm. okay List building. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, all I, right. I held it back on the turtle. Let's <laughs> talk yeah. list building. Here mm-hmm. are some of my things. Key strats. You got to be able to deal with the gods. So that yep. means you got to have either a game plan for them or a way to take them out or a way to ignore them or get away from them or whatever. Mm-hmm. And by that, I mean Archeon, Marathi, Gotrek. I know he's not a god. Shut up. I don't care. Uh, oh, he's totally a god. He's the avatar of yeah, whoever. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. Techless, whatever. Pick your pick your gods, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the power of 3 plus save on monster heroes. Like, if you can get a 3 plus save hero, monster hero, high wound hero, mm. like, you should. You just should. <laughs> they're so Can I just mm-hmm. say... They're so good right now. Yes. Do you remember when everyone was complaining about Ethereal Amulet? Oh, sure. It's so much worse now. Yes, this is so much worse. <laughs> so ethereal, much worse. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, because like goodness. at least with at least with ethereal amulet, every two and one they rolled actually did wounds. Yep. Yep. Right. That was the nature mm-hmm. of the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now it's like Here we are. It's so easy to just make it only ones, and there's still plenty of reroll ones. I mean that mm-hmm. that uh, empty throne Baron Guard unit was a zinch mark, so they rerolled ones to save naturally. Yeah. Oh, nice! Right, nice. So and there's so much tech ones. in that. Yeah, like that's all mm-hmm. the time. This is what they were. Yep. Uh, monsters that shoot. So uh, this is a, hmm. I think, underrated current category. This is a small list, but this is what's powering the thunder lizard uh, effect. Yes, indeed, mm-hmm. uh, the turtle swinging by there. But, like, I mm-hmm. think a lot of the Thunder Wizard power... Thunder Wizard. Mm. First of all, I don't know what a Thunder Wizard is, but that sounds awesome, but we need one in AOS. <laughs> that's a <laughs> storm cast, so Vince. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's... All right, I'll give it to you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, monsters that shoot. Okay, mm. so the regular Stegadons, yep. as well as mm-hmm. the Stegadon with Chief on them, have a mm-hmm. bow that's on, like, threes, threes, neg one, three damage that makes three shots. Yes. Okay. Three damage. Sky Streak Bow, baby. Okay. The Bastilladons are monsters that shoot just, you know, potentially twice a round, doing yep. ho- ho- just hordes of damage, much more to even chaos, right? Yes. 
Oh yeah. Okay. Love it. Love it. What uh, what is it? Double damage or D? I think it's D6. It's, it's, it's like plus one. Plus I think one. it goes from two to plus three, one. but okay. still, yeah, I believe, it's yeah. nine shots at yeah. full uh, health. Yes, it's nine <laughs> shots at three damage each, right? Like. Ooh. They're very Ooh. points efficient too. You, they lost the the weird like rules saying that they're they're an unrendable one up whatever save, sure. but they're still that, so tough. Yeah, start, uh, still starts at a two up. It's it they're they're still basically unrendable. Um, right. Yeah. So monsters that shoot are really really interesting because mm. think of how many battle tactics mm. you get bonuses for when you do with monsters. Um, okay. Yeah. And if you yes, can complete sir. those at range, like kill a battle line unit, you get a bonus if it's a monster. Cool. I have five shooting monsters. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm going to start rolling. Harpoon, dude. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. Eat my own words here. That's what I get. There you go. Yeah, like, just, I'm going to start shooting at the broken ranks, that unit. I'm going to start shooting. By the time I'm done, one of these five monsters will have killed it, and I'll get a bonus point. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And so, like monsters that have real ranged attacks, not just like a single breath that does maybe you know hits on twos, wounds on threes, neg one ren, d six damage. It's like that kind of crap can get out of here. Come on, stormcast dragons being good. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Give it, give us a real breath weapon, you know. So I'm very mm-hmm. interested in monsters that have ranged potential. Yeah. Um, I think thunder lizards have it. I think there's a little bit in IDK. I think there's a few armies that have this, and it's really fascinating. Um, yes. boy oh boy if that October book ends up being like a uh, a Beast of Chaos book as I, as we all hope it will be oh mm-hmm. man and they completely remade the Cygor scroll so it wasn't total garbage oh Vince could suddenly be a real power piece in that army yes sir. Right? oh man that the 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 14 cockatrice list can go and stop with the four Cygor list coming up hmm. out of nowhere killing these monsters that are being ridden by wizards going everywhere. Oh, the potential. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Frogom says uh, shooting monsters get almost nothing from monsters' actions, monsters that only shoot and don't melee. One, who cares? Is yeah. my answer. Not to, I'm not trying to be rude to you, Frogom. I'm just saying, like, one, who cares? Those are those are bonus things. I don't care. Like, yeah, I, we don't I need don't, to go I don't need that. those. Two, things like Stegadons, I can still charge happily into units. Mm-hmm. Right and and get those things going. I can still just be running around destroying faction terrain. Like mm-hmm. I can do it when I need to do it. Yes. Right. So like I'm not. Do you know how many mo- like in all five tournament games I had two monster actions used against me the whole tournament. Hmm. Not to mention yeah. that everybody loves hunters of the heartlands nonsense. Oh, right, so it's like God, you have to get to do your monster actions. Mm. Like so many lists, I was up against Head Hunters Chef's of the Heartlands, kiss. and I yep. was like, "Enjoy that." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I got zero of those, and I don't care. Yep. Right. Yep. So, uh, like, I just don't see it as a thing. It it, it does not matter. Like, mm-hmm. they're they're interesting bonuses once in a while. Uh, like there you go. Uh, units that can answer mm-hmm. battle tactics, be thinking about what of your units are going to be really good at excelling at battle tactics, right? Who can move, yes. who can get into, who's going to complete your, your savage spearhead, who's going to be really good at pushing and finding the battle line unit and, and you know, so on and so forth. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that leads to my next point. Mobility matters. Like mobility matters so much in this new, even on the smaller board, it sounds like it shouldn't, but I think it matters even more because you yeah. tend to be more mixed up with people so the ability to fly, too. to teleport, to be around where you want to be is such a huge deal when the board has a lot more, like, high-flying movement to me is the most powerful thing in the game right now. Hmm. Yeah, Like, if you can get a super high-flying movement, because the board's often real gummed up, and it's often hard to just pick up and teleport and drop back down at 9. You don't always get to mm-hmm. be where you want. Hmm. But yep. if you can just shoot over to the top of people and move 16, 19, 20 inches, whatever nonsense, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, suddenly, you can be everywhere you want to be. Yep. Right. Uh, uh, I've had I've had games. Sorry, I just want to say this real quick. No, where the the humble felbat or the aether wing uh, sure. has been able to even just fly over people. Um, prosecutors, if they keep their three d six charge, I have to say it like that because we don't know a book yet. Yeah. Uh, to just charge over screens and just assassinate a hero. Or just again, just tag a little bit just to steal an objective. Yeah. 
Soak uh, up unleash hell, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I like yep. the prosecutor shout out with the three d six. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah. DPS checks. You got to keep DPS checks in mind. There are lists that are going to DPS mm-hmm. check you. Second place at Nashcon was a two hundred thirty five wound savage orc list. It was brutal. <laughs> it was just bodies, just mm-hmm. swarming the board. I Insane DPS check, right? Mm. Um, like that makes Mega Gargans look like a walk in the park, right? Just mm-hmm. because of the sheer sure. number of wounds, um, and and the board presence that they have, like they were just everywhere. They were everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. I would walk yeah. by his games, and he would just be like, every time he would dominate seventy five percent of the board. Yeah. It, right. And it's funny because like everyone said going into third, oh hordes are dead, so no one's bringing horde breakers. Because they, they're not planning for that. They're planning for the Marathis and the Gotrex of the world. And then there's this this person, yeah. 245 however many wounds. It's just a green tide. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You didn't see that coming. Uh, and then finally, power projection. Like, what in your army can actually project power? And that doesn't necessarily mean ranged attacks. That could be could be spells, could be ranged attacks, could be high movement, right? you got to have something in there that projects power in a real way. Hmm. Um yeah, that's the that to me seems to be the key stuff that you want to think about when you're when you're list building. What do you gentlemen think? Anything I missed in your list building thoughts in 3.0 value? I mean, I concur with everything you're saying. That you hit every major thing I'd ever want in a list by different considerations. Um, I mean, it, it's yeah, it it's if it and one thing to remember is local metas are your more important thing. You see, like, we'll talk about all these tournament stuff, but there are going to be times where your meta is just four dudes that hang out in your basement playing random stuff, and you'll never see a Marathi or a Gotrek, so you got to mm. plan for whatever they're bringing. You know, and you're laughing like, yeah, I kill Savage Orcs all week in my thing. And then you get to some of these bigger tournaments, and then this is where this stuff will come in, where, like, I, I know from my local meta, there are three to four different Gargan players that could bring that, and I'm like, all right, cool. I need to kill a Mega Gargan a turn or a unit of three minis. I know they, they bring a list with four Megas. How, what is my DPS check for that? How right. can I mm-hmm. swarm and kill and move on to the next one? What what am I setting up for battle tactics? Because I, I know there's a few Deepkin players, and you know they're, they're going uh, double turtle. And how do I try to crack through that when I need mortal wounds? How do I deal with people that... You know, have spell portals with a tech list that can just throw it out and then get rid of it at the end of their turn. What do I do for a bridge from Tempest Eye or someone who's KO'd uh, flying high around their ships? Yep. Mm. One thing I want to say, that David had a few fun awards at Nashcon. So he Mm -hmm. had an award for killing the most monsters and an award for killing the most generals. Mm. Okay, since there's now bonus generals. This was the orc player? No, no, no. This is, these are just two separate awards, okay? Okay. They were there. Okay. The person who won the Monster Killer Award, like the Beast Slayer or whatever it was called, okay, mm-hmm. killed 20 monsters. Oh. 20 over the course of five games. He averaged four oh. monsters a game. He fought. Oh, he was man. he was a Cities of Sigmar, temp, uh, also a Tempest Eye player, okay? Yeah. And nice. He had, he, had the, the, he had the standard 420 Blaze it build. Sure, yeah. sure. And he fought two Suns players. <laughs> and just nice. smoked them. Dude. So, Dream run, man. There you go. Yeah, 20 oh. monsters. His nearest competitor had 12. Yeah, mm. That's one of the more incredible things I've heard in a while with AOS. <laughs> 20 yeah. over five games. That's mm-hmm. that's amazing. Oh, um, this game is nutty. <laughs> yeah, I find the less building... And again, it's total potential recency bias, but... Uh, mm-hmm. the the mix uh, I find it the most intriguing that I can maybe ever remember in the game. Sure, as you said, Rocco. You know, a lot of us thought MSU was going to dominate. Hordes are still very prevalent. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of value in running them and having the DPS check. Uh, they're good. They can be helpful with battle tactics. They can help on a number of fronts. Uh, mm-hmm. But n- non-hero monsters have a greater role hero monsters and certain mm. heroes have a greater role, a more meaningful role than ever, especially hero monsters, obviously. Yeah. So I, I, I think the mix might be the best that it's ever been just in terms of, you know, the viable variety of just about anything under the sun. And, and again, yeah. we're seeing that in about anything apparently can go, you know, certainly three, two, if not four, one. Right. Yeah. Right. 
And you're earning these three twos now for sure, because yeah. everyone just seems to be going for the, these in these tournaments, these harder lists, because, you know, you can go and just pick up a go track to throw into your order list. And all of a sudden it gets that much scarier. You know, yeah. doc players are loving the Marathis with the bow snakes, you know, at Archeon at people had that guy in, in a box for so long on their shelf. Mm. Like, Oh, you know, he's okay. End of two. He starts sneaking out a bit more. You see some of this, uh, the Zinch build start get, you know, picking up some steam, and and now here he is. The board got smaller, so he can power project farther as a single model worth all those points, right. just murdering things left, right, and center. Yeah, you know, because b- before it was either you tried to kill him or you avoided him. Now the board's smaller, and he flies and has all this movement, and is the hero monster that can do all this extra stuff. Right, and you're like, huh? <laughs> Can't avoid that. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's keep moving. Drops and deployment. Okay. All right. Uh. And yeah. Okay. Or D and D. Yeah. Uh. Drops. How much does being a low drop matter? That's the question I want to discuss. Shooting, ambushing, alpha, early claims, all this kind of stuff. Mm. Right. That's that's what you're mm. that's what you're negotiating over when you're negotiating your drops. Yeah. And then deployment, my argument is it matters more than ever, especially based on your drops. It almost has to be derivative of your drops, right? Yes. There's a much shorter space between armies on average. And mm-hmm. also, and this is something that we talk about that a lot, but there, the, what this... Uh, <laughs> Joe Fever asked, what does what 420 Blaze refer to in AOS? 30 <laughs> Iron Drakes, often with a bridge, uh, who get teleported forward, set up, and have the Rune Lord buff on them. So, uh, usually with Hawkeye, so they're making like two attacks each. So it's 60 attacks coming out of the unit on like some probability of probably twos and, uh, twos because they'll, if there are generals near them with Hawkeye, then they're, they're twos and twos, neg two rend one damage each. So they're just, they just shred anything they touch. Cause it's like, it's, it's insanity. Uh, mm-hmm. and that unit's actually fairly tough to pick up, especially with enemy shooting. Um, yep. And it's obviously a porcupine. If you charge it, you just die unless you charge it with a chaff unit first and then double charge it. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, at any rate, uh, so drops and deployment. Gentlemen, mm-hmm. Tyler, start us off. How much does yes. being low drop actually matter? Matters a lot. I, I think it's still highly relevant. Uh, 3.0. Yeah, it is somewhat list dependent. I mm-hmm. think certain lists are gonna want to be more low drop than others. So I don't play Luminath. I haven't played Luminath in a while. I played them in 2.0. I would tend to think that all the sequel you want to be a low drop Luminath list for, yes. for various yeah. reasons. Yeah. Yep. Uh, That's playing, true. Playing Daughters of Cain. It's another glass cannon army. Apart from Marathi, everything generally dies in that army to about anything in the game. So I don't want to be doubled at any time, ideally. No. And again, sometimes I run into some problems because I'm still in automatic mode of I'm just going to get my opponent first turn and call it a day, which has bit me in the butt a couple of games when I shouldn't mm-hmm. have done that. But yeah, because I don't want to be doubled because then they get into the cauldron or the Kenarai or the snake bows and they get wiped out. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I, a short answer, I think it's just as if maybe even more relevant than it's ever been. And there's a lot of nuances and details to that. Hmm. Yep. And there are some armies and builds where you're like, all right, deployment is so important. I want to go high drop so I can counter deploy. Hmm. And that'll come into play. And you're like, I don't care if I go second because I've, I've brought extra cheap units of disposable bodies with maybe pregame moves to try to psych out my opponent where I can move up and cover space to stop them from teleporting in. I can pull them back to actually have a farther distance between us. I've seen where they're putting their wizards that are going to be casting buff spells, so I can now put my auto on vines near there. If they're going first to try to pick up this alpha strike on me, I can game plan this in list building if, again, this is prevalent by you. And some armies, again, can't, do have the tools for this. The cities, the uh, current Stormcast, again, even... Um, like anything that could ally in those, and I'll order uh, a lot of Grotz because they have the bodies for it. Chaos mm. with the uh, the warband, 
that uh does the it, the one with the, the the rock prowler the untamed beast there we go they've got a pregame move yep um there there are ways to get around that if you you're like i i can't afford the uh just to go like a battle regiment or even two battle regiments and i'm like all right so if i'm not playing in that space how do i take in this new space how do i go about this and it and again it's building these extra cheap units to be chaff and screens and we're gonna say all these buzzwords so that when they take that first turn to alpha strike me they just hit a meat wall that cool you killed 100 points now my army swings and now i've yeah. got 1900 points coming in on your 500 yeah so let's talk about the nature of drops in the game right now. In my estimation, you're the the everything clusters around one, four, five, and infinite. Yes. Okay. I mean, I think I, I do think there's still there's something something to be said for two and three in there, but yeah, like again, like, I'm talking about I mean, clustering. Yeah. Where, where does yeah, it? Where yeah. did, like if I were to chart it out, right? You would yeah. they, they wouldn't be zero, but you'd see spike, yeah. spike, spike. And then just like, but it just looked like a heart monitor from there, right? At like yeah. eight, nine, yeah. ten, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I'll that's probably that. fair. But just the point that, you know, like, I think two drops is a very coherent. Sure, there's of plenty drop. of armies that, that will be... two drop, right? That will fit in like, yeah. a, uh, oh, yeah. that will take the your your basic unified battalion plus one other big monster thing. Exactly. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, Skaven are a great two drop army, right? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. often have two big things you want to take, two big leaders. Yeah. But when I say one, four, five, it's because there's there's a pretty obvious battalion combination that equals those. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right? Like one is you just fit in the unified battalion, four yeah. is your your uni your battle regiment plus command, and five yeah. is your battle regiment plus warlord, and then more is your something else. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> yep, and I could see a battle regiment and a hunters of the heartlands being a, a four drop as well mm. um but yeah, yes because you yes. could be battle not to take away from the sure. point to add to yeah, yeah. it but yeah totally fair you're absolutely right at any rate the like the the reason i say that like those are the sort of where things where things group around is you should know those numbers and know where you're at and then what chances that gives you Yes. Right. Yeah. Like if you're five drop, that means against all the infinite drop people, you get choice against the five drop people, you get roll. And a lot of the times against some very strong lists, you, you're not getting the choice. Right. That's <laughs> you have to yeah. know that. Yes. And so like drops and deployment have to be this back and forth thing interacting with your list building. Right. Mm. Because if you're playing in an army or playing a list where you have like chaff for days, high mobility and some kind of power projection. Mm hmm then sure, you can be a million drops and probably not care. Right. right? Yes. Like Smorgan's uh, Eschen list is probably a great example of this, right? Like he cool. could be yeah. a million drops and not care because he had like units, he had ambushers, you know, he had stuff mm -hmm. he could teleport around. He could move his army very easily. Everybody could run and shoot, right? So the army yeah. could be suddenly very fast. It could just explode out of its zone. So like he could be a million drops and it was irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Right. If somebody I'm... handed him the first turn, great. He'll claim the points. If somebody takes the first turn, who cares? They can't do enough damage. And yeah. then he's mm -hmm. just going to flood around. Yeah. Right? So like if, if that's the kind of thing your list can do. So my point is these need to keep referring back up and down to each other. <coughs> right. And to list building our previous sli uh, the slide. And yeah. like all of this needs mm -hmm. to inform each other. Yes. Right. If you're playing like a chaffless Lumineth. Okay, yeah. then yeah. you probably don't want to be a million drops. No, no. <laughs> you can't afford to take the battalion for the extra artifact. You're you're going for whatever sub faction you took, and you're gonna like it. And it's just that one, right? Because you can't you can't afford for them to be able to get into your juicy stuff, no. right? With like, be you know, without you having stuff in the way, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna be able to, to to sort of control the the nature of the the flow of the battle. So, like, you have to understand your list and how it's going to play. How will it deploy? What will its response be to the enemy's actions? How does that affect the drops I need to tailor my list to? And then how does that factor back up into my list building to fit that? So it's like yes. you, claw, you climb up, you claw down. You climb up, you claw down, right, over and over again until you get to that balance. I think that's how they interact, right? None of these can be taken in a vacuum. No. No, they can't. I, I completely agree. That is... 
And and the sooner us as a community can get in on this, uh, the better for the health yeah. of our game too. Sure. Um, and and soon eventually we'll see like yeah you know there are going to be more armies that don't care about drafts they go into that that bajillion you don't mind, but you got to build for it and you got to make sure you have the troops for it to do the extra chaffing. And if it's again you're bringing fifty sentinels a unit to twenty a unit to thirty Jack Ballard style now, with a, a techless. And the spell portal, and he had one hero, Lord uh, the Venari Arch Regent, whatever the guy on Llama yeah. Horse, yeah, Lord yeah, sure. Llama, yeah, you know, and yeah. it's and then two units of ten of the the Pikes. That's a very tight list, and you need first turn, or else you're just going to get blown off off the table. That list sounds like a good argument for Apex Predators. <laughs> of course, he might just shoot up all the heroes, but I mean that—that's the thing that I like the most about Apex Predators is I hate mm -hmm. seeing all these lists that have two measly mm -hmm. little heroes, you know, yeah. five six wounds or one for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I understand. It was always the reason yeah. I defended the you know the previous versions of that. Yeah. Um, scenario. And also, right? Deep can but... take a hit for that too. In some of these more, like you know, say eel spam one more time. Um, and it's well now it's an eidolon and a king or maybe if you're doing the flip tide it's the the little foot wizard the tide caster and an eidolon right yeah um yeah. but nick you know, on the on the whole yeah. lr why lrl wants to be a low drop and again like the first uh the smooth brain is they're a glass all less equal they're a glass cannon like yeah they're, they got uh, the often, hit. assuming you're outside of huracan yeah. right they're yeah. a low mobility elite fragile army Yes. yes. Yeah. And you, you know, you're going to be playing in different missions and you really need to dictate what you, what is optimal for you to do in round one. What's optimal may be to hop on objectives as opposed to getting pinned in your deployment. I mean, I played so many games in 2.0 where I was trying out high drops Lumineth and mm -hmm. I would just get pinned in my deployment and I couldn't right. get caught back yeah. up in time. Yep. And yeah, and they're, they're really fragile. All those equal, they can be really fragile. You know, obviously not a metrica. There are some exceptions, but generally they're fragile. So if you, they get double turned, you know, your screens go away and they get into your sentinels. Well, it's game over at that point. You know, things like that. It's kind of similar to what my what I was saying about Daughters of Cain. I don't want anybody getting into the cauldron, the Kenrai, the snake bows, or it's game over. Right, right. Uh, and then swaggy, sh yeah, exactly. Like if you you have troops that can just deliver unbelievable pain, but if they get jumped by the fights they don't want to have, it's over. And yeah. you don't have chaff in LRL, right? right. Uh, mm -hmm. So Swaggy Shadow said, can you explain why you would want first? Um, uh, would like to alpha, but is standing on the objective that important? Sure, so alpha lists will often want first. High shooting lists will often want first. Like Tom took yep. first turn quite a few times, right? And was just mm -hmm. like, just took the risk of the double because yeah. he, you know one of his lists was a Barack Siflin list. Right, mm -hmm. that, that had they could drop war light warp lightning vortex on you out of spell in a bottle and just go guns blazing yep. uh, on you from the ironclad that moved like you know a million bajillion bajillion inches in the pregame, right? Move. Yeah. Or first hero phase or whatever the heck they can do. Whatever they're there, there's always a I think he chooses for. the turn it happened. But yeah, not the point. So like, you know, <clears throat> The fact that he could get into people before they'd have any of their defenses up, like what they could, they have right. an all out defense and maybe they put a la best day ever on one of their heroes. Right. But that's yeah. it. Like they have limited options. Yeah. Right? And also for LRL, it's important to get the ward save from Teclas because you do tend to run elite in the grand scheme of things, keeping your guys that much more yeah. alive. Uh, you know, if you're say something like a Zytrek, you can stack your pluses to cast pretty easy with Tech still being alive. Um, yeah. You can um, land it light really well through the spell sure. portal, which people sleep on a bit. And then this is where the oh, I've got thirty archers that are re-rolling to fish for fives and sixes, and all of a sudden that conversion rate and that math just jumps up. Mm. For yeah. But beyond the alpha strike, I think there is value. Mm. Like, you can still sometimes want to go first. If, like, for example, if you are playing a basically melee-only army, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. let's say they've only got melee. Yep. Fine. You know, it might be the right answer to... Let's take Nurgle as a good example. That's probably one, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Where they don't have, like... In some builds, they don't have a huge amount of hitting power, but they're hard to move. Yes. Right? They, they kind of get stuck in. It can be yep. a good idea to sort of like 
get up there, screen them out earlier, you know, sort of like to exactly as as Tyler said, you're not trying to alpha. You're not going to go across the board and attack them. There's no reason to fight nah. them. But you can get out, claim the appropriate objectives in the, in the appropriate scenarios and sort of set the board up to prepare yourself against the double. Yeah. Right, like you, you yep. ca- like you have the time to like put all your buffs on, move it to the exact position, set up new, like move your castle forward, set up new mm-hmm. double chaff lines. You know, whatever you're doing, right, to to sort of prepare yourself for the worst case scenario. But now they're going to have a really hard time shifting you and getting the full three points out of the objectives in the first round, right? In certain yes. scenarios, so that can be the other reason to go first, right? You can force them into a position where maybe they only get one or two out of the basic objective points. Yeah, right. I've got a, I've got another way too. You could always move backwards and apply all your defensive buffs. Sure. Uh, yeah. Depending on the scenario, of course, for like sure. what you're and, scoring, and what you're reach. sacrificing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. but j- just take that step back. That's what I loved in 2.0 with how far away some of the, the starting lines were, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna give you first set up a double. I'm like, cool. I'm gonna step backwards and shuffle my dudes. And like what? I'm like, yep, okay, then come up and then you double turn me. It's like you just said one turn. Now you have to be overextended on my side of the board here. Mm. You your whole army isn't fast. You're gonna be stretched out. Well, my army's so condensed. When I finally double turn you, this isn't like a catch up mechanic. This is I end the game mechanic. Right. Mm. Right. Yep. Anything else? One on? real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say real quickly on uh, Lumina for what it's worth. Uh, I've, I've certainly have found the Lore Seeker to be a a piece that can give you the choice or that yes. can force your opponent to, let's say, go first or to go second. So even if you have high drops with Lumineth, he's like a little ace up your sleeve that you, depending on how mm-hmm. you deploy him, he can force your opponent into a specific decision. So yes. that's, he's kind of like a way to dictate priority in round one without being low drop, just yep. for what it's worth, anybody who's interested. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's... the wind seeker is, is what he is, right? I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. yep. he's great. Uh, he's a super tech piece. loves him too. Sure, yeah, uh, yeah. Super tech piece. Yes. Um, I might convince Tom to do either Lumineth or Settler's Gain for as my partner at Havoc, so we'll see. Ooh. I might get him up finally into, into the elves. <laughs> okay. But, All right. Yeah, I, I find the drop game, guys, just utterly fascinating. Like, Rocco, you mentioned at the top of the show, you know, Hunters of the Heartlands, Warlord, Double Warlord, Double Bad Reg, yeah. uh, Single Bad Reg. Like, there's so much going on now, and uh, yeah. hopefully we're still going to have this in a few months' time once we start getting these battle tomes, and then we're not just going to get back to crazy town with yeah. battle tactics for everybody and core battalions for everybody but we'll Cause, see because that's we'll see. the fun bit because we're playing a pure 3.0 game without knowing what any of these new battle tomes truly look like yeah like we could hope that everything's a soul of like grave lords because that came out great it's transitioned well mm-hmm. uh, for all the worries that everyone's had um, we've seen tournament play with it go strongly um and you know if we get more of those where it's not it, it doesn't come out overpowered and scaring everybody and freaking out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll be a win for the whole system. Yeah, definitely. Yep. All right. Community comp, our last topic of the day. So we're going to move oh, through, through this one kind of quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, this has been talked about a lot lately. And I have pretty strong opinions on this. And here's how my strong opinion goes. Mm-hmm. Um, any TO yeah. should do whatever they feel is appropriate because it's a it's you know it's instant meritocracy what Mm. i mean by that is like if you decide you want to comp something and no one buys tickets to your tournament your idea was bad it's that easy okay yeah um pretty pretty straightforward marketplace yep Mm -hmm. exactly yes it is it is truly it is actually a marketplace of ideas yes um Mm. and the 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 concept that we would like in some kind of structured way, create community comp. I hate from the bottom of my blackened soul and think it is completely insane and the wrong idea. Like, I don't mind the bottom up grassroots, any TO does what they see fit as always. That's what makes tournaments interesting. TOs Mm -hmm. being kings, right? Like I, I sort of want pre-unification Italy or, you know, that, that kind of thing. I want like, I want lots of city states, right? Yeah. Lots of people making yeah. interesting decisions and, and, uh, and you know, the sort of that rising and falling. I mm-hmm. have no, no absolute faith in any way that we could turn this over to some kind of governing body and have them start sensibly laying rules on top of whatever GW 
is doing and we all suddenly think that yeah they're the they've they've caught to the right thing like yes there are problems systematically in the game and we need to raise our voices and make sure that gw is aware of them in a in a you know sort of courteous and professional way but make sure to make it clear that it's a problem and mm -hmm. uh and those rules and issues should be fixed by the people who own the game it's their responsibility to do so as the game's designers uh yes not like there's there's no governing body there's no uh there's no people i'm going to trust as an authority it just doesn't exist so the only like as as a community group and i don't want to see this this I, I don't want to see the community suddenly split apart into incredibly divergent metas that further increase the barrier of entry on people going to tournaments. Because that's mm. what comp does. These incredibly complicated comp systems that people lay over things to try to fix all the problems in the game just create mm -hmm. more barriers of entry to people ever going to tournaments because they don't know what the heck it's talking about. They bought books, they think they understand the game, and suddenly this tournament's playing by a completely different way. Right? Yeah. And I just, I, I don't like it. I think it's net negative. I understand it's fixing problems that need to be fixed. I also agree those problems need to be fixed. It's mm. the wrong solution. Um, it, it doesn't do or accomplish what people think it does. And there's no reasonable way to come to a consensus uh, on this. If you're talking about like some smaller community of a game, that's more like unified in some way. Like Adam just mentioned something like the, the blood bowl, the previous blood bowl league where it was a dead game and they yeah, had no choice. And they came together and formed a governing body and everybody got together yeah. and said, you and know, it worked. Th this, this is how we should run our games and this is what we're going to lay on top. Great. That's fine. That worked for that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just not going to be the case in a living game where stuff is changing constantly. Who's going to agree yes. what the, how do we agree what the initial set of changes are? Who's going through and updating that? Because you don't just need to do it once. Who's now full-time job, right, yeah. mm -hmm. is keeping these things current, right? Yeah. Is who's going through and updating these every time there's a points change, every time there's an FAQ, every time there's a new battle tome, every time there's a change, who now has the invested constant authority and will and drive to not do this once, but to do this every day for the next X years. Uh, just as a side note to this, the best example that I can think of in the six years was early on when we were in that 2015 pre 2016 GHB stage. Mm -hmm. So we had we had Mo with his uh, Circle City Clash, I think it was, and so-called Mo Comp. Mo -comp I mean, people yeah. may not even know about this. And then Mo Comp led to uh, Heel and Hammer. Uh, yep. Wayne to the and South Coast, and, and GT South Coast GT, on. yeah, mm -hmm. and it was and it was Russ, Dan, Wayne, those guys getting together, uh, and they were essentially creating a shared baseline of comp for the community, and it really right. became the the collective attractor, if you will, in the community. Right. But yeah. I mean, they sure as hell didn't want that job permanently, and I no. think it did it did meaningfully lead into the GHB, and they were heavily involved in that process, but. Yeah, to me, it's a pretty good example of what Vince is, is talking about in terms of the challenges of trying to do something like that on a permanent basis and yeah. actually getting by in everywhere. I just want yeah. a quick shout out. Welcome back, Karina. Glad you enjoy the hobby cheating videos. Thank you very much. I hope they're helpful. I'm glad to see you're getting into painting minis for D&D. I've been playing D&D for 32 years now, still have a weekly game, so certainly understand that. It's a, it's a, it's a great time. All right, at any rate. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Rocco, I, I, what a, like... Is there anything I'm missing here? Because I see all the problems. Like, I get the positives. They're there. Yep. But it's a small yep. pile, and the negatives are a big pile. Right? So I think an another thing that needs to be considered with this, with those early things, was not only was AOS 1 such the Wild West, we were also yeah, building no seemingly a community no from way. scratch. We, we needed to do it, yeah. Yes. It was also a tenth, a twentieth of the size the community was then oh, that it right. is now. Yeah. And like if we look at what like the ITC did for 40k for the past few years, where they like abandoned GW's tournament system and made their own that eventually got folded back in. We we don't have the, the, the manpower, we don't have the player base, we don't have the people we're still a growing game. This there the logistics just aren't there. Hmm. Even in, in the best fever dream of this all working, where we do have our own independent board of whatever, 
the game keeps updating. Are we going to all all of a sudden turn our backs on GW and go, yeah, that's nice. We're going to go do our own thing. We, we don't have a large enough player base to split right. to do mm-hmm. these things, to then go and say, oh, if the one system's better than the other. Um, and it there's just not enough of us at the end of the day. And, and, and the game's ever-evolving. We need such a robust system that we are not centralized enough to have. Uh, maybe the Australians can do it because they all freaking know each other. <laughs> but and they have their own meta way out there. I I I got made an honorary Australian. I know about the big sheep. Oh. Um, I I know uh, about Bendigo. I I I Ballarat. I can name a bunch of towns that sound like vowels get thrown together. But oh. unless you have such a close knit community like that, it's just not going to happen. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I mean the. The the answer here is like I get why people want it because they don't yeah. feel like GW is responsive enough to 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 the challenges, right? And that's probably true, by the by, mm-hmm. right? Like, I mean, I, Riot I don't think Games they... isn't. Go ahead. Sorry, I just want to say this one, like uh, League of Legends and Valorant, uh, the Riot Games that that does patches for their own video games like once a week to every two weeks isn't responsive enough. Yeah, sure. for their own player base and their growing metas of all their craziness. And why would we ever think a board game model game, th- this kind of analog world that we're bringing in here would ever have an apparatus capable of doing this if right. a video game company can. Yeah, hold on. I want to address yeah. something over here. T. Sarathi said, it feels like most of the arguments against some form of comp depend on the possibility of GW doing something they've never shown they even want to do. I'm not saying that. I, I That's not my argument at all. At all. So I'm going to repeat what I just said in case mm-hmm. I'm being misheard. It is GW's responsibility to fix this, this junk that's wrong. But yes. even if they don't do it or do it wrongly, that is irrelevant. The problem with it is there is no single authoritative body that should be handed the power of changing the entire game by fiat, increasing Mm -hmm. the barrier of entry of people at tournaments who Mm -hmm. are going to then keep a living system of comp laid on top of this at all time that stays current responsive to every release, battle tome, FAQ, and points change, right? And then is adopted and feels like suddenly we're hedging out TOs who want to do their own thing. It actively makes the community worse. Individual TOs who feel that they have the power to operate within the space from a common set of rules and change what they want to change, I'm fine with. If at your tournament you want to make Archeon 1,200 points or not allowed or ban special characters over 500 or whatever, Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm all about that. The ones I like, I'll go to. The ones I don't, I won't. As I said, it's just a simple meritocracy. It happens Mm -hmm. easily and quickly. If your ideas are good, people come play your tournament. If they're bad, they won't. Right? Yes. It's that simple. But, like, the negative externalities here are so strong. It's. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it because it's because it's GW's responsibility. I'm saying it's GW's responsibility, and we shouldn't do it because all of the other things that are bad... That's what I'm saying. And I yeah. just think that list far outweighs the positives. I'm not saying there are no positives. There are. Right? If if magically we could get to a point where we had that governing body, hmm. where where they were making the right choices at all points in time, sure, there would be some positives. There really would. Like some of these silly things would get fixed. Okay. So Vince, mm. what what would you you know, gun to your head, you're forced to go down this general path of community comp. What how would you do it in the way that you thought was, you know, the least bad option? I would write a set of potential recommendations that TOs could choose to implement in their games or not. Mm. And and they're sorry, in their tournaments or not. Okay, can you expand on that? I mean, sure. Uh, give me, give I would provide a menu of choices for ways mm-hmm. that they, uh, for ways that, for, for individual rules, like a buffet that they could choose from to implement in their tournaments that are all things that would seem to have a, <clears throat> a at least the most minimally hurtful and maximum, maximally positively impactful 
uh, interactions on the type of tournament they want. And I would group them by the category of what are you trying to achieve? So I would drive them by value benefit (laughs) statements. What are you trying to achieve? If you are trying to create this kind of a tournament, then consider A, B, C, and D. If you are trying to create this kind of a tournament, consider E, F, G, and H. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And I would I would empower TOs to make the decision through a, um, through a, you know, their through their own decision making. They know their local community. They know their meta. They know their people who come to their tournament. I, I why do anything but empower them? Right. That was that yeah. is that that is the best way I could think of to do it. Okay, mm. so give me give me some examples of specific specifics like archeon's a thousand about... points no special yeah. characters over 500 points but 500 points plus hmm. so gotrick sneaks in huh or is he or getting whatever. the bump 400 up points plus i don't care pick yeah, whatever you, you get yeah. it right okay sure uh you know like the following units can only be reinforced once ever mm. right mm. uh yeah stuff like that right those kinds of things okay and yeah noobs plastic crack did have an awesome post uh on on this topic so we've talked about him on the show quite a bit over uh recent months so yeah Mm -hmm. folks can definitely find that uh on on his blog all right uh yeah that's okay so that's interesting Mm -hmm. and would so would you would that be an effort where you're trying to get like Dave Griffin and Brenda Melnick and it's, you know, name your favorite. Sure. You'd have to make yeah. it like some, you, you have to, you have to get it like imbued with authority, which means you needed to gather together like a host of different TOs and people who are sort of highly respected in the community. You need to all draft right. this constitution together. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, and whatever, like, yeah, you've got to have your 1776 convention. Right. Yeah. Like I, I Sure. You got to have your first and second constitutional conventions, I suppose, as it were, right? Yeah. Like you, you, know, you can't you just go alone article... and do it. Yeah, like like wait, yeah. you're, you're gonna. But I mean, people will revolt. Yes. There will be people who hate it, no matter <laughs> oh, yeah. how open you are. Yeah. And then you'll get an articles of confederation. You're like, okay, we got to redo this a little bit. Hold on, what are we? <laughs> we got to revamp. We got to. Then you get a Shays Rebellion, and then you get. You're like, okay, maybe different countries do different things. Maybe this could be something that the AOS Worlds organization, like if we're going to say the top of the top of the top of whatever, right? Yeah, I mean, my answer, Tyler, is gun to my head. I, yeah. my, but how do I do this? I say pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Almost made me break my no curse thing I'm trying to do for you. My goodness. So, so backing up to the start of this uh, event, you were, we were talking about the little mm-hmm. marketplace of ideas, meritocracy. Yes. Now, yes. I've heard a lot. I did the traditional miss 20 years of Warmer Fantasy, but I'd heard a lot that Warmer did you? Fantasy 8, yeah, man. Warmer yeah. Fantasy 8, you know, there were comp systems and that there were quite a bit of variants. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I'd heard. Vince, you could probably, maybe Rocco, you as well, could speak on to this. But sure. what, I, what I'm hearing you say, Vince, is that, or at least what I'd heard, maybe this is, tell me if this is wrong, is that mm-hmm. you were an expressing an assumption that it would, let's say, be okay if we mm-hmm. had a dozen more face hammers, which chose to have sure. basically one page list yeah. of here's what we're doing with those house rules. We're making, yeah, we're making real changes here, folks. So, so there's an assumption that that would be okay because I had been, I had basically heard there are a lot of people who thought that that was pretty devastating to the Warmer Fantasy Eighth community because there was not coherence in, across tournaments. Yeah, my argument is there's a real simple way that'll get decided whether or not Face Hammer's massive changes were a good idea. How many people mm. go to their tournament and what's the response they get at the tournament? If the mm. if you, if they get a lower attendance and the people who show up all tell them I didn't like this, they'll sure. stop. Yeah. It's that easy. They yeah. won't do that again. So you, but you, so you you don't have the assumption that like prima facie what they're doing is a bad idea. Prima what, facie, what, no. Prima facie, what they're idea. doing conceptually is not a bad idea. Correct. Now, specifically, the choices they made may have been a bad idea. Does that mm. make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Say that, yep. say that differently. Because uh, the one dude running foxes that doesn't ever going to show up to this event like like 
Okay, uh, real. let me answer John Castle real quick. What does yeah. the comp part mean? Are they house rules or altering standing rules to the game? The The general concept here behind community comp is you, somebody, like some body, some group, some whatever, in the community gets together and says, this is a set of additional rules, changes, and restrictions. We're going to lay on top of the existing rules that mm. are, you know, this isn't the game company doing it, right? That is like, this is how we're going to change the game. Like, this model's banned, this you can bring, yeah. this army gets yeah. 200 more points, whatever, whatever. I don't care. Like, there's lots of ways you could do it, right? And 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 that we all suddenly accept that. Now, to return back to your question, Tyler, right? Yeah. Um, the, uh, their concept of creating heavy changes... I am not innately against is what I am saying. The okay. specific changes that they made, I don't like very much and think that they went way too heavy handed on some armies and just left mm. other problems completely unaddressed. Kind of like left some yeah. seemingly overwhelmingly obvious, aka Archeon and yeah, off right. the table. Okay. So, so yeah, like, no. and this is the problem with it in general, right? Is mm. that it's, it's like, one of the, con one of the sort of, constant refrains against community comp is like oh it just picks new winners and losers I, i'm not going to say that because that's stupid that's a that's mm -hmm. a smooth brain argument against it right yes. that doesn't actually hold any water yes it, it does pick new winners and losers that's yeah. what we're doing here yeah right it's like that was the fruit, whole on the point ground. i was trying to get rid of the current list of the theoretically small list of winners and make yeah. a broader set of winners right so, mm -hmm. like, that's not an argument against it. I've never bought that. I think that's a bad faith argument, okay? Mm -hmm. So none of my argument relies on that. Yeah. The, the the thing with Facehammer was their changes were pretty heavy-handed, and I don't think they were... I don't think they are flush with reality. That's my ultimate argument, right? But Fair. conceptually, mm -hmm. I'm not against what they're doing. Like, you could have an individual TO take a heavy-handed set of changes that were positive for their community, their meta, and the tournaments they want to run. Mm, yeah. A good example of this is Steve Herter and the Holy Events. Mm -hmm. Steve has pretty heavy comp. At Holy yeah. Havoc in the team tournament, you're not allowed to use special characters for their more than their four hundred points or more. I right? like that. Okay. I'm a fan. But that's because he's trying to present a very specific. It's a more narrative focused tournament. It's what he's trying to do. There's like a specific mm -hmm. story he's trying to tell. Yeah. Right. And you said a dirty word though, Vince. You said narrative gaming. I understand. But, like, Steve runs a fantastic tournament, and he has more people signing up for it every year. Mm. People yeah. have voted. In the meritocracy, they've said, we like that this type of tournament exists. It's yeah. different. Right? And and we, this group of people who go, that is continuing to grow, we want to see it continue. Yeah. Right? I, I'm glad we're drilling down on this, because, again, I, I've heard this argument a lot that is expressing this assumption that if we had a whole bunch of face hammers or holy wars, you know, that is events that are going harder on a particular end of the spectrum, harder on the quote unquote cop, as opposed mm -hmm. to like NashCon isn't really going that hard. David's doing, you know, we did two list format. We introduced some schemes, some different secondaries. Sure. It's not really that hard that there's an assumption I've hear all the time that that is going to be a pretty strong net negative for the ecosystem, for the community if we had that and that's kind of what i'm questioning if that yeah I, my argument true. would be it will never get there because i think most the, the community there's a large part of the community that wants a fairly set of uh that wants a, a set of fairly standard tournaments run pretty close to the rules like that's the taste that's what the market has spoken to right and then it yeah. wants ancillary events that that are interesting and different the raws of the world the holy events of the yeah. world right that suit sure. a different type of player and that kind of thing like I think the market's already been pretty clear on this. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know that it would outright be a net negative. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't, right? If every time I went to a tournament, I had to ingest like five pages of new <laughs> specific army changes, it'd be like, oh, geez. But I, I, I just, you know, I, I think that could be a negative, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I just don't see that as being a reasonable way this is going to run because I think people will just revolt and stop going to those events, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Um, I mean, for me, with um, just just really quickly, like to speak to like the fantasy battle at eighth. So I was in fifth and sixth edition fantasy as a as a young kid, 
mm-hmm. uh, tail end of fifth through sixth. And I stopped because, you know, you go to college and you hit high school and you're like, oh, I'm going to do cool stuff and keep my nerd stuff private. And then I don't want to bring it with me to, to college or whatever. And I wanted to come back on what would have been eighth. And I looked at all these comp things and I'm like, listen, man, I don't even know the base game. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be doing all this crazy stuff that unit sizes have gone ridiculous for like a 60 man unit of just a regular group of dudes. And it's like 200, 300 points. You're like, huh, wait, why, why do I? When they're making like little models to represent like 12 dudes, it's like a table, right? You put onto the movement tray to be like, yeah, so you don't have to buy all the models. I'm like, so why are we comping this to make the make the unit sizes mm-hmm. so big if you're buying extra stuff because no one wants to buy the models from the company and then the game died. And I'm like, I don't I don't need that in my life. There, there's other things I could be doing. I could be playing games with my friends and not going to these weird tournaments mm-hmm. and then having our own fun with decent enough base rules and i like the models and you know there's there's more things and i need to get more invested and there needs to be more of a structure and if it's there's 60 70 different ways to play the game within an hour radius of me what you know which one do i know is to me right if i disagree with 69 of the other ways then all of a sudden all my play experiences are, are going to be non-existent but then if i'm trying to get 60 70 different rule sets because each little club has their own thing or each state or each region or each set of tournaments. That's, that's a lot of free time I don't have if this game is generally viewed as, you know, your, your parents with young kids and have Warhammer, you're lucky you get a game or two a month in. That sure. is a lot of investment. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that it's, no one's going to have. There's always the AOS dad game you know, challenge, right? That this is a right. dad game. The average player of Age of Sigmar is 35 years old with kids, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know that's true, but I know that's true. I was at the tournament this weekend. I looked around the room. Okay, yep. I like I, I can do the math. Yeah. And yep. uh, there wasn't it wasn't exactly a room full of Zoomers. You know what no. I mean? Like it was it, yeah. like it was, most most people fell into quite a specific demographic. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Sure. And my young millennial ass over here. Yes, as we <laughs> mentioned yes. off camera. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not the standard. I'm not the. I'm not the norm, and I'm okay with that. No, you're still like you're still with it. Certainly within the standard deviation that would lead to the average. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. At any rate. Yep. Um, yeah. And also, like, I see my YouTube demographic too from my own videos. I know what y'all are out there like. Yeah, like I look at. Stats. Yeah, I look at the this. Yeah, like any of us who are who are on YouTube, we look at the. It gives you an uh-huh. age breakdown of your stats, and it's like I know what bar is the biggest right yep mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh do cats count if you can't afford to have kids 100 percent. i only have dogs oh, yeah. kids are I've silly and got my dog yes um but yes uh okay i'm also older than that too by the by so there you go um okay. all right i won't tell anybody Vince. i think we beat this one into the ground uh but yeah, there you go uh there's my short discussion on comp hilarious mm-hmm. uh okay mm-hmm well, gentlemen, this has been a lot of fun. These are our thoughts on 3.0 so far after I experience. I hope this is all helpful for everybody. Hey, if it was helpful, why don't you hit that like button? It's so easy and so nice, yep. and it makes my day when you do that. I love seeing mm-hmm. people hit like. It makes me very and happy. And subscribe. Yep, hit that subscribe. Hit bells. Click mm-hmm. everything down there that seems reasonable for you to click. Yeah, You know, that's what I would like you to do. Yep. Bells, if you go to that description, too. Like buttons. Yep. All those kinds of things. Just start clicking stuff. Share stuff. Go nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Just just mm-hmm. click all them buttons. At yeah. any rate, Rocco, absolute pleasure having you on the show, brother. Thanks for having me, guys. This has been great. Hopefully I can come back. I didn't make too much of an ass in my... Oh, see, there's my one curse. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. Then. I'm on that, the bad list. It's that, barely, that barely counts, man. You're it's great having you. You're good. You're good. You're, we're still, oh, you're still good. firmly in PG-13. You're okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Newt yeah. says the little report flag. Yeah, don't, okay, don't hit that one. Not that one. Like <laughs> no, I said, no, everyone down good. there that makes sense. Uh, yep. At yep. any rate, thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate it. As always, we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. With a new meeting type. Ooh. <laughs>